is Rogers TV Ottawa. Number one for local news in Ottawa and the Valley. This is City News, now on 1011 FM and 1310 AM. Good morning. It's Wednesday, February 16th. I'm Andrew Boyle. Right now in Ottawa, minus 10, in Smith Falls, minus 8. And here's what's making news in Ottawa and the Valley. The Beijing 2022 Olympic Games. A historic day at the Olympics for Canada and in particular for one speed skater. Here's City News reporter Jamie Pulfer. A powerful day for short track speed skating for Canada at these games. A top of the podium finish in the men's 5,000 meter relay. This is a huge farewell to Charles Amlen, who skated in his last uh, uh, ever Olympic race. He becomes this country's most decorated winter Olympian and most decorated male Olympian with six medals over five Olympic games. His teammate, Stephen Dubois, winning his third medal in Beijing. The trifecta now, a gold, silver, and a bronze. So a dozen days into Olympic competition in Beijing, Canada now has 18 medals, three gold, four silver, 11 bronze, and a big day for Charles M. Len. Jamie Pulfer, City News. City News time, 9.01, and now your forecast with meteorologist Jill Taylor. For Ottawa, the Valley Smith Falls today, the clouds will take charge. A strong gusty wind out of the south, gusts could exceed 50 kilometers per hour, will climb to plus 5 this evening and then stay near 5 degrees this evening and overnight with that rain moving in after about 9 o'clock tonight. For today, the guaranteed high this evening, plus 5. And right now, minus 10 degrees in Ottawa, minus 8 degrees in Smith Falls. StatScan says the annual pace of inflation was over 5% for the first time since 1991 last month. The agency says the annual inflation rate was 5.1% in January compared to 4.8% in December. Now, driving much of the increase in January, prices for housing, gasoline, and groceries. Gasoline prices were up 31.7% last month compared with January 2021. Excluding gasoline, StatsCan says the annual rate of inflation would have been 4.3%. Prices for groceries increased year over year 6.5%. That is the largest yearly increase for groceries since May of 2009. City News Time 902, an associate professor of criminology at U Ottawa says a resignation of a leader during a crisis can be detrimental. But Michael Kempa says in the case of a multi-force approach to the protests dealing with the downtown Ottawa situation, the resignation of Peter Slowly is not that critical. It's never an ideal time to change leadership at the outset of a major declaration of emergency, but Given that there are several heads around the table, we're removing one. The rest of the table will remain intact. Now, Kemp says there will be an inquiry that has to happen 60 days after the end of the Emergencies Act in Canada, and that will include just how the protest was handled by Ottawa police. Now, coming up on the Rob Snow Show in moments, we'll hear from the head of the police services board, Diane Deans. Also coming up this afternoon on the Sam LaPrade Show, Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson. Blame for the slowly departure is partly due to what some have called the police mishandling of the protest from the get-go. We're learning now what additional powers the Declaration of the Emergencies Act brings. For example, it is now against the law to bring children to an anti-government blockade, participate in a protest directly, or bring food or fuel to those involved. Under the Act, any violator will face a fine of up to $5,000 or five years in jail. But a core group of protesters in Ottawa say the act is just a government scare tactic. They will stay put until all COVID-19 vaccine mandates and restrictions are lifted. I'm Andrew Boyle for News Anytime. Follow up online at ottawa.citynews.ca. your opinion. It's the Rob Snow Show on Rogers TV and City News. 1011 FM and 1310 AM. Aaron O'Toole. Peter Slowly. Who is next to fall after 20 days of protest? Good morning. Welcome to the Rob Snow Show on City News. 
I don't know if today, today will match yesterday's avalanche of news flashes, but uh, it's early in the day yet. We're knee deep into it already. Coming up, as you just heard, with Andrew, Ottawa City Councilor, Chair of the Ottawa Police Services Board, candidate for mayor, Diane Deans, on everything that's been happening over the last three weeks in our city, everything that went down yesterday with the resignation of Peter Slowly as the Ottawa Police Chief, a stunning development that leaked at about 11 o'clock, even though the Ottawa Police Services Board was meeting in camera, in other words, behind closed doors, don't be leaking stuff, it's top secret stuff, you know, the general public is not supposed to know about what we're talking about because we're in camera, but nevertheless, (laughs) it's still managed to get out there, and that's it. That's it for Peter Slowly, done in by a trucker's protest. I bet you wish it He had never heard the words Freedom Convoy. I didn't expect that yesterday. Not yesterday. Eventually, but not yesterday. I didn't think Peter Slowly was long for the job. I'm sure you've had similar thoughts. Not after his handling of the the situation. I mean, it's going to be three weeks this Friday. Three weeks since the first truck started rolling into town and the police basically rolled out the red carpet. Sure, come on in. And I mean, within a week, it was clear they'd lost complete command of the situation, right? That, that, that was the fatal error. And people who live in the downtown or people with businesses downtown, they're still suffering the consequences of that decision 20 days later. I mean, I was by there again this morning. I I drove by Kent Street again. And uh, the ballpark parking lot. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. I mean, we have a state of emergency in the city of Ottawa. We have a state of emergency that's been declared by the provincial government. We have the Emergencies Act coming into force by the Trudeau government. And it's like it's had no effect at all. Like Kent Street is still Ottawa's newest subdivision. And the ballpark is still the staging ground for everything. It, it, the only thing that has changed is that the careers of people in power are falling by the wayside. But still, I didn't think Peter Soley would quit yesterday. I thought that would happen, you know, a few months from now, when hopefully all of this will be in the rearview mirror. But I guess um, the Battle of Billingsbridge may have been the final straw. That's what did him in. So we'll get into all of this. Diane Dean's coming up here on City News. And then we're going to score our political fix. A look at the political ins and outs of everything that's going on here in Ottawa, what's been happening in Windsor, Coots, Alberta, Emerson, Manitoba. That's winding down now. Uh, All of it from all the political angles. Justin Trudeau's going where no prime minister's gone before, right? Using the Emergencies Act. More details about that released yesterday. 35 years since that came into effect, the Emergencies Act, replacing the War Measures Act. So, you know, Mulroney and uh, Kretchen, Martin and Harper, none of them felt the need to use these extraordinary powers. And yet Trudeau does. As Paul Wells noted recently for McLean's, didn't use him with 9-11, didn't use them with the financial crisis, didn't use them early in the pandemic. When the virus was killing people at a rapid clip, we had no vaccines and a terrible economic situation. But now we have a hundred and some trucks downtown, 400 people, give or take, and now the government has decided to use the Emergencies Act and conscript tow truck drivers. And by the way, the government, the Trudeau government, this is the Emergencies Act, but yet it's going to take its sweet old time. This is like a slow-moving emergency here. 
because the House of Commons isn't even scheduled to sit ne- next week. It, it's so urgent, so pressing, so vital to the territorial integrity of the country that a vote might not even be held on it until March. You have the NDP leader, Mr. Singh. You know, he goes up one side and down the other, Mr. Trudeau. Failed leadership this and failed leadership that and Mr. Trudeau's done nothing but fail and fail and fail and fail on this, that, and everything else. But I will support him. (laughs) All right, then. The Conservatives are for it until they're against it, so they've been caught twisting in the wind on this, and even Mr. Polyev is starting to offer, what do you call it, a more nuanced position. You have premiers accelerating the easing of restrictions, and the public is supposed to believe it has nothing to do with the protests. At the municipal level, the mayor is just doing his own thing. Doing his own thing with the former chief of staff to Doug Ford, a guy named Dean French. And the only thing I know about Dean French is that nobody likes Dean French. That's basically the only thing I know is that he is a loathsome individual. I mean, it's all enough to make you want to take time out in the bouncy castle, right? And then go for a sauna. So we have Kate Harrison coming up. She's on uh, the right side of things. Vice Chair, Summa Strategies. Carl Belanger used to work for a guy named Jack Layton. And Carl is the president of Traxion Strategies. Score your political fix at 9.30 this morning. David, David, David. How many kidneys did you have to sell for the tank of gas this morning? A dollar sixty a liter this morning. I'm waiting until payday. I can't swing it right now. I can't swing it right now. I'm sorry. Walking tomorrow. Dollar sixty point nine at most Ottawa gas stations. A dollar sixty. Like it just crossed a dollar fifty not even that long ago. And now this morning the inflation rate is out and it's January's inflation rate. It's the middle of February now. And the number is 5.1%. And I mean, there's nowhere to hide from the higher prices. Shelter costs up 6.2% year over year. Biggest jump since February of 1990. Like These predate the birth of my producer. Overall food prices up 6.5%, beef up 13.5%, chicken up 9%, fish up 8%. Margarine up 16.5%. And I thought all of this was the dairy farmer's fault. Condiments, spices, and vinegars up 12%. Skip the ketchup. Gas prices up 31%. You know, if Mr. Trudeau wasn't in such political trouble because of the way he's mishandled these protests, this, this is the issue people would be talking about. The cost of living. So Philip Cross will be here, former chief economist uh, at Statistics Canada, chief economic analyst at Statistics Canada. He's with the McDonnell Laurier Institute. And he's been saying for a few months now that the consumer price index is likely not even a true indicator of the real increases in the cost of living, that the actual inflation rate is higher. This is the first time that Canada's inflation rate has been above 5% since September of 1991. When I Adore Me Amor by Color Me Bad was the number one song on the Billboard chart, and Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, was number one at the box office. It was a forgettable time 
or pop culture. <laughs> Is Freddy still dead? They still making Freddy Krueger movies, Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Never heard no. of either of those. Oh, things. really? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> We'll do the talk back hour this morning between 10 and 11 o'clock. We do that every morning in our phone calls and opinions. He had a lot to say yesterday. Couldn't fit you all in. Uh, so let's just pick up where we left off. Two big stories in the mix. The resignation of the police chief and the measures outlined by the Trudeau government defending the pending use of the Emergencies Act. You can comment on either or both of those stories that are in the news because that's how we roll on the Rob Snow Show on City News. Here at the Thirsty Maiden, uh, we offer a variety of products. Uh, so everything from breakfast items, so it's breakfast sandwiches and scones, which have become a staple item here at the cafe. We have an assortment of pastries and cakes and desserts. So we're really big on our dessert bar, which a lot of people come here for. And of course, our delicious coffee beverages. So we do offer uh, not your typical lattes, things like a chocolate banana coconut latte, cinnamon coconut, which is my favorite and our take on even a pumpkin spice which we add nutmeg and a dash of cayenne in just to give it a bit of a kick when you start a business um you don't factor in all the things that could go wrong you think anything that goes wrong any failure it's got to be something on your shoulders you didn't market right you're carrying the wrong products you didn't price your items correctly all the things right um but when this pandemic began things going through my brain where I didn't factor in a pandemic. Um, and we were just starting to grow. We were about to blow up, you know, and I think I spent two days crying. Um, and then I shut my business down for, I think, a period of two or three days. And um, just being at home for those, for, during that time, I realized this is not me. I'm, anybody that knows me knows I'm a, a hard worker. I don't give up and I'm a go-getter. And I started to think, well, I, I should probably just start clearing out my freezers and posting and seeing who wants to buy what. And that was sort of how I built my momentum back up. I realized that there's still a large number of people that wanted to support us and were looking for the items that I had to provide. So we started there, then I reopened literally not even three or four days after I would closed my doors and then started doing curbside pickups and deliveries, started doing the deliveries myself, free deliveries to the local community, going as far as Bell's Corners and CARP as well. And uh, that's why we're still here. This community has really kept us going a year into the pandemic. But we've had a change over staff a couple times now and, uh, you know, situations change and you know, when you can't offer hours and staffing, uh, sorry, hours for your employees, you don't blame them when they have to go elsewhere. So I think that's also been one of the challenges is recruiting, training, and then they leave, you know, and then bringing in more people and recruiting and anybody in this industry will, you know, will tell you that that's something we deal with on a regular basis, whether or not COVID's in the mix or not, but um, more so now, because every time there's a lockdown, there's a risk of, Will we make it through? And then you lay off more staff. And again, their situations and their circumstances change. Pillar of community opinion. The Rob Snow Show returns on Rogers TV and City News. 101.1 FM and 1310 AM. It's been a stunning 24 hours in the city of Ottawa. The protest shows no sign of ending. The federal government has outlined its emergency measures under the Emergencies Act and Ottawa's police chief, Peter Slowly, has resigned. Diane Deans is a city councillor, chair of the Ottawa Police Services Board, and she is a candidate for mayor in this year's municipal election. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. What is your reaction to the resignation of Peter Slowly? Well, 
you know, you never want to see uh, uh, someone leave the organization, especially at a time like this. But, um, you know, the the public are frustrated. They're very frustrated. They have watched this go on for 20 days now, and they don't see, as you correctly said, an end in sight. And uh, they want to see action. And, you know, Chief Slowly, I have to say, um, he was very focused on ensuring this ends peacefully and with no one getting hurt. And that has to be a huge priority. Um, we, he asked for more resources. We got him more resources. And I think there really, truly are more resources on the ground now. And I'm very hopeful at this point that this can end peacefully uh, very soon. Was this resignation voluntary or was it requested? It, it was a mutual agreement between the board and Chief Slowly. Okay. How much will Peter Slowly be paid? Yeah, uh, uh, as part of the um, uh, departure, we signed a non-disclosure agreement, so we won't be disclosing uh, that information. That's pretty standard in a labor relations issue, Rob. Okay. <laughs> what did he do wrong? You know, Chief Slowly, when he came here, I, I was the board chair that hired Chief Slowly. I was hopeful and optimistic about him coming into this organization. He came in on a change agenda uh, and with a full intention to change. And I can tell you that he met a lot of obstacles and op opposition right from the very beginning of his tenure as chief here. The culture inside police is not an easy culture. I have found that out for myself. Um, and uh, they um, there were there was a lot of pushback against Chief Slowly. They gave him a very hard time. There were racist memes. There were anonymous letters. There was all kinds of strife that he faced during his short time as the chief of police in Ottawa. Um, you know, and he he had a very difficult time. So, um, you know, I think probably Chief Slowly had had enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, what did he do wrong? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say what he did wrong. I, I don't direct police op okay. operations. I don't have 30 years in policing to know. Um, but just the outcome. The people have had enough. So 20 days of this is enough. And we just need to see more action. Like we saw some action uh, at Confederation Park. We saw some action over at the ball stadium. But then it seemed like halfway in it, it retreated. Uh, there were symbols. There were signs. There was... What about this so-called Battle of Billings Bridge? This Battle of Billings Bridge, the counter-protest at Bank and Riverside. Was that kind of a final straw, do you think? No, I don't think that was a final straw. I think people have had enough and they were standing up and they, I can absolutely entirely understand why. I, For me, um, the frustration is all those symbols on the hill, the bouncy castle and the hot tub and the taking down the fence and desecrating our, our, our symbols, all of those trucks on Wellington Street, the honking of the horn, the diesel fuel, like like it's just been a lot and there just hasn't felt like enough pushback. And uh, I think people are really frustrated about that. Okay. Uh, but listen, Rob, yeah. there is lots of blame to go around. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, sure. Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get yeah, to that, okay. Councillor. Okay. Just hold on. The, yeah. the, the Police okay. Services Board mm -hmm. is responsible for setting the overall objectives and priorities for the provision of police services in this city after right. consultation with the chief. It's the yeah. board's responsibility to hire and monitor the performance of the chief of police. There are news reports that Peter Slowly was a bully with a short fuse. What do you know about that? Well, um, you know, there was uh, um, one complaint. The board takes every complaint seriously, obviously. And uh, there was one complaint that uh, we, the board received, and we forwarded that complaint to the investigative body, which is called the um, OCPC. And uh, that body is seized of that right now. That is the only complaint that the board has received. Okay. You mentioned this the 20th day of protest. Mm -hmm. No signs of it ending. Another weekend is approaching. We've seen how the crowds swell during the weekends, right? So, yeah. and um, there's a crisis of confidence right now, not just with the police, but with leadership mm -hmm. at all I political agree. levels, at all. Yep. 
levels yep. of government. You have been yep. a counselor for decades. You're chair of the police board. You're running for mayor. Mm -hmm. What responsibility do you accept for the current situation that the city finds itself in, given that there are calls for your resignation? Will you resign? Um, uh, it's not my intention at this moment to resign. I can tell you that the police um, services board is responsible for the uh, provision of adequate and effective policing in the city of Ottawa. And we ha we do that by the hiring and uh, firing of um, key positions in the organization and the senior command. We do that by ensuring the provision of resources that they need for um, adequate and effective policing and general oversight. But we do not direct day-to-day -day operations. And I know there's all kinds of this Twitterverse out there that thinks we do, but we don't. And, you know, Rob, if you just take a moment and think about that. Uh, Diane Dean, city councillor, should I be directing this operation instead of the chief of police who has, like, many years of experience in policing and a lot more knowledge of uh, policing um, issues than I do? That wouldn't make any sense. So high level, um, we have done everything we can. We have consulted with the Solicitor General throughout this, asking, you know, is there anything else the board could be doing? We have been assured that we have been doing everything that we should do. I believe that is true. We, in, we are just in the midst of hiring a new chief on a semi-permanent basis. We, I have been on the phone. I've been working 12 to 14 days, hours a day, every day since it started. I've been on the phone um, getting the resources here, getting the extra police here that we need. Uh, I've been very... I've been working very hard. If somebody wants to use this as a political uh, knife to stab me with, they can. But I do not think under the Act, under the Police Services Act, or my performance, they could point to something that I have done um, that, or, or something I haven't done or something that I've done wrong. Okay. How hopeful are you that the measures in the Emergencies Act from the federal government can provide a way out of this? Yeah, I'm hopeful that I, I, I feel that it, it's all been, a, the wheels have turned slow, but these are, this is new territory for all of us. We've never seen a protest and occupation of a city like this in Canada before. And uh, it, it's been difficult to really wade through all of this for everyone at every level of government. But, you know, now the, the city, the province, the federal government have all used uh, that tool in terms of declaring an emergency uh, to give extra tools. Uh, the RCMP and the OPP have come in to the command center with the Ottawa Police Service. We have more knowledge of this kind of crisis management in that command center than we've had in the past. We have uh, finally broken the juggernaut of not being able to get enough resources, police here, and uh, we're getting more help. So I believe that we have the conditions now that we should be able to bring this to a peaceful end. Thank you, Councillor. All the best. My pleasure. Yeah, Take good care, Rob. You too. Bye. Yeah, bye. Councillor Diane Deans is the chair of the Ottawa Police Services Board and is a candidate for mayor in this year's municipal election. 930 News and then your political fix. This is the Rob Snow Show on City News.
news in Ottawa and the Valley. This is City News, now on 1011 FM and 1310 AM. It's Wednesday, February 16th. Good morning. I'm Andrew Boyle. Right now in Ottawa, minus 8, it's minus 5 in Smith Falls. Here's what's making news at this hour. Police Board Chair in Ottawa, Diane Dean, says former police chief Peter Slowly dealt with a lot of strife in that role. Dean says he faced a tough time internally, including pushback and racist memes. When asked what Slowly did wrong with this protest now into day 20, Dean says there seems to be a push against the protest, but that seemed to peter out. As for talk of Slowly being a bully towards staff, Dean says there was one complaint against the former chief in his tenure to the police board. Fines and jail time, not a concern for those occupying Wellington Street. The Emergencies Act can find anyone with a child at the protest or someone who brings food or fuel to protesters. They could be fined or jailed, but protest organizers call that a scare tactic by the federal government. Cost of living shot up 5.1% last month across Canada. That's the biggest jump since 1991, and it was even worse in Ottawa. 5.9% the increase. One possible break could come in your monthly bill for hydro. The Financial Accountability Office in Ontario set to release a report into the government plan to lower your bill by 12%. City News Time 931. I'm Andrew Boyle for News Anytime. Follow up online at ottawa.citynews.ca. He's the opinionated Ottawa icon. The Rob Snow Show returns on Rogers TV and City News. 1011 FM and 1310 AM. It's time to score your political fix with Kate Harrison, Vice Chair Summa Strategies. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Rob. And Carl Belanger, the president of Traxion Strategies. Good morning, Carl. Good morning, guys. So, Carl, the Trudeau government is going to use the Emergencies Act to try and end the protests in Ottawa and elsewhere. What's your reaction to that news? Uh, I mean, <laughs> how did it come to this? I mean, we're talking about, well, according to police, there's 150 people left downtown right now. Uh, how did it come to this? Uh, clearly, there was an abdication of responsibilities by uh, the city of Ottawa and the Ottawa police. Uh, that's first. Uh, second, the Ontario government did not want to step in and didn't. So it was left to the federals to somehow do something. Uh, so far, it hasn't changed much. Uh, it's certainly not in Ottawa. Elsewhere in the country, blockades have come down. Perhaps the threat of financial penalties and, and license suspension uh, has worked. But the reality is that now Justin Trudeau is basically taking ownership to the end of the crisis. And if it doesn't end sooner rather than later, he's going to have to wear it. Okay. What's your reaction to the news, Kate? Emergencies yeah. Act. It feels like using a sledgehammer when we really need to be using a scalpel. Uh, this is the most powerful legislative tool that the federal government has to try and uh, end demonstrations. It's used in instances of terrorism. And I think we're pretty far apart when we're talking about what's happening on Wellington Street uh, and the FLQ crisis. So, you know, I, I think that the government allowed themselves or found themselves to be backed into a corner. They felt that this was the only tool left at their disposal, uh, but I'm not sure that it's going to be all that effective. If they couldn't even uh, work with other levels of government to help enforce existing law, um, why would we think that this is now suddenly going to work? And, you know, the Ambassador Bridge blockade did come down. It came down before the Emergencies Act was in yeah, place. And yeah. so to Carl's point, you know, for 150 people, uh, this really seems like an overreach. Yeah, I think it's 150 uh, vehicles, 150 vehicles, right? So I think it's about 400 people, I believe is what it is, but nevertheless. I still think that there, there have been larger demonstrations in this city. Now, they've had end dates, and I think that we need to be kind of looking towards that, yeah. working towards it. I'm not convinced that the Emergencies Measures Act and the, the powers that are granted within that uh, is the right tool uh, to, to spur some action here. Well, yeah, I mean, you could, you could argue that it is an overreach, I think, because it wasn't needed to peacefully end the blockade of the Ambassador Bridge. The, I mean, the situation in Coots, the details are disturbing. I mean, the, you have the seizure of a weapons cache, the arrest of several individuals, charges of conspiring to murder RCMP officers. I mean, serious, 
serious business that I don't discount, but nevertheless investigated by the authorities without the need for an Emergencies Act. And I gather by the end of business today, the situation in Emerson, Manitoba is going to be resolved as well without the Emergencies Act because it's not in force yet. It's not in force yet. It may be several weeks before it's in force. So, not only that, but I was so, just yeah, going to say that yeah. the, the regulations for that act, which again, you know, I'm going to sound like a broken record, most powerful legislative tool that the federal government has uh, to restrict uh, people's ability to move, et cetera. Uh, not, regulations came out at 9.30 p.m. last night, despite declaring on Monday that this was going to happen. I think that's an irresponsible use of this act, and the federal government should be challenged a bit as to the necessity of it when, to your point, it's not actually enforced yet, but how you can move to bring in something like this and then have such a gap in the length of time between announcing it and then telling people what's actually involved is something the government should try to justify. It's kind of sloppy, isn't it, Carl? Well, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> there's a bit of improvisation, clearly, yeah. because nobody, uh, frankly, nobody thought that the federal government should intervene here. It's a policing issue. It's it's a law and order issue. There are laws, there are bylaws, there are rules, there are regulations, there are orders that are already in place and are being broken, and they already have the powers to do something about it, but they're not doing it. So, so, so what's the problem here? Um, uh, and the federal government need, feeling the need to intervene uh, shows that partly the narrative and the message that the, the protesters, the convoy is, is driving across, um, is, is somehow working, that it is the federal responsibilities to act. And they, they in my opinion, they've taken the bait. Uh, at the same time, um, if you have a city and a municipal force in Ottawa that's not doing anything and the provincial government is not stepping in, what is the federal government to do when the capital of the country is under siege? Okay. Let's listen to a little bit of the question period from yesterday in the House of Commons. Roll that. Windsor has opened up. Candace Provinces Berta. and police are doing their jobs and blockades are starting to come down. But the Prime Minister thinks that now is the time to use this extreme measure and invoke the Emergencies Act. Isn't it true that the Prime Minister's actions could serve to actually make things worse and not make things better? Exactly. The right Honourable Prime Minister. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting their communities and neighbourhoods, and ensuring the jobs and our economy. I'm afraid I'm going to have to interrupt the honourable, the right honourable Prime Minister. I'm trying to hear the answer, and I'm having a very difficult time. There's some shouting going on. I'm going to have to ask the honourable members, maybe just keep it down. And if you've got something that you're not agreeing with, talk amongst yourself with someone next to you. You don't have to <laughs> shout it out to the person across the floor. <laughs> Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, you are absolutely right. This is a time for responsible leadership, not crass partisanship. The situation requires additional tools not held by other federal, provincial, or territorial law. It's what responsible leadership requires. These measures must be and will be compliant with the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We will always defend the rights of Canadians to peaceful assembly and to freedom of expression. But these blockades need to end, and unfortunately, Conservative politicians continue to encourage the leaders of these blockades. All right, leader of the op- All right so that's a, a little bit what it sounded like during the question period uh, yesterday, very raucous affair, but is this an admission of failure? The very fact that the federal government, almost three weeks into this now, has to use the feels it has to use the Emergencies Act. Is that an admission of failure on the Trudeau government's part, Carl? What do you think, Carl? Is it well, an admission I mean, of failure? if there's a failure here, it's the failure of the city of Ottawa and the police of Ottawa to, to uphold the law. Uh, that's the real failure. Now, I'm not going to blame the prime minister for, uh, you know, that failure. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to blame him, however, for being missing in action for the first part All right. of, of the protest. When the convoy was sitting in for being gone from the public eye for almost a week and saying nothing, uh, allowing this to take hold. Uh, but it's not. I don't think it's Prime Minister's fault if the city of Ottawa can't protect its own citizens. 
Okay, but just before we get to Kate, though, is he not responsible in some way for stoking it, Carl? Well, I... Uh you know, it, it, there is there is a fair point about uh, that was made about uh, about uh, about that by one of his own MP, Joel Lightbond, yeah. when he said that uh, he was using vaccine mandates as a political wedge. That started in June or July, uh, clearly, and and it, it is certainly part of the problem. It was done to wedge the conservative out, and to a certain extent, it worked. They won the election, so certainly on that front, uh, you're absolutely right, Rob. Okay, all right. I love it when somebody says that. You're absolutely right. All right. <laughs> it's so rare. It's so rare. <laughs> We'd have it on tape now, though. Kate, um, is it an admission of failure? I don't know that they look at it that way, but it certainly no, but how is. how do you I mean, look at it? <laughs> well, I think it's a big failure. At, at minimum, it is a failure to uh, plan accordingly. This thing, there was, this did not spring up overnight, the truck convoy. This moved slowly across Canada, uh, and the response was to sit on our hands and do nothing for about three weeks. Now, Carl's right. Uh, there's no one that looks good here, not Ottawa Police Service, not the province of Ontario, and certainly not the federal government. But we are now expected to believe that Justin Trudeau is taking this so seriously that we need to use the Emergencies Measures Act. The guy was skiing in Gatineau on the Saturday, one of the Saturdays that the protest was happening. Like, give me a break. This is either serious enough to require major, major intervention um, and occupy all attention of government, including that of the, of the prime minister, or it's not. And I think that to your, your point on stoking the, the division, when the government can't even bring themselves to table a plan to end restrictions and look at revisiting mandates, uh, that says where their priorities are, and it's not on economic recovery, and it's not on meeting the provinces where they are in terms of scaling back restrictions. They moved ahead with an Emergencies Measures Act, but they can't tell us how we're going to get out of COVID. And that's a big problem, and that's not going to make those that are ready to move on very pleased with where the federal government's priorities are right now. All right, Carl, what did you think of uh, when you heard the news that uh, Chief Slowly had resigned? What was your, like, immediate reaction to that? Well, I was surprised by how, how quick that, that happened. I mean, I did not expect, expect Chief Slowly to be there for the long run. Clearly, uh, as the chief of police, he has the, probably the biggest responsibility in the current fiasco and current mess in Ottawa. Uh, but he's resigning in the middle of the crisis and nothing is solved. And now we have an interim chief uh, who uh, may or may not have the leadership to lead this to an end. Now the RCMP and the OPP, they finally are stalking. <laughs> and have a, a joint effort. But so far, um, uh, things are not improving in Ottawa. Uh, you know, the injunctions are being ignored. Uh, the bylaw officers are barely enforcing the, the regulations that are in place. The police are helping the protesters, and they're certainly not stopping the refueling of the trucks. So, uh, you know, the, the citizens of Ottawa have, have the right to, to know what else could have been done and why wasn't it done yeah they have a plan they have a plan in fact uh this this came out of the police board meeting yesterday uh carol and me and the city councilor carol and me and uh asked the acting chief steve bell uh when will these trucks actually be moved but roll that that david play that but when can we expect those rigs and the pickup trucks and uh, some of the paraphernalia that are downtown when can we expect expect that to be action to begin to be to move that out so it's um as i as i indicated early on we we won't lay out our operational plans in a public forum we will brief the board as is our responsibility in an in an in-camera session at the appropriate time what i can tell you is there is absolutely a plan that has been developed through our partners at the opp and our cmp to have an integrated approach and response to ultimately end the occupation in our streets. Okay. So there, Carl, there is a plan. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've heard right. that from right. slowly, too. Yeah. Um, Kate, what was your reaction? You hear the news. Slowly yeah. is out. What, what, what? I thought, uh, to, to Carl's point, I thought it was, uh, it was fast. I yeah. think it was probably all, always going to end, uh, end in that way. Because, um, unfortunately, just I think the level of leadership there or if, if slowly was providing direction or order to officers if, if that was happening they certainly weren't uh, acting on it and they certainly weren't behaving in a way to get things done so uh, at that point you kind of have to 
um, you have to leave at that point. But I, I do think that at least part of his experience coming into this whole thing was informed, of course, by G20. Um, you know, we've been telling police forces rightly, uh, certainly in the last number of years, that in instances of protests, the approach should be de-escalation. But de-escalation is not an excuse for inaction. Uh, and I think that's what we were seeing. Yeah. So I do have some empathy for the police chief. Uh, but I, again, I think that the lack of planning around this, given that we knew the convoy was coming and happening, is really what um, what did Chief Foley in. Okay. Couldn't this be viewed as a victory for the protesters? Okay. First Aaron O'Toole is gone, and now, you know, the police chief. What do you think, Carl? Well, they certainly think so. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they certainly think that, uh, you know, uh, while the provinces are announcing their plan and, and the, the end of certain rules, uh, every time one of them does that, they, they cry victory and it reinforces their resolve. Uh, they think they're winning and it's unfortunate because, you know, it's like when you're protesting at 5 to midnight, asking for midnight to happen, eventually midnight will happen. It's not because you're there, but it will happen. And, uh, and right now we are in a situation where they believe they're winning, but but there is no question that the protests are striking a chord with a portion of the public opinion because they are conveying frustration. I think most Canadians don't agree with the means that are being used. Yeah. But, but uh, you see the rise in Quebec of the Parti Conservateur, which is a brand new party in Quebec, is now in second place. Uh, amongst francophone voters, and and that's a party that's been against the sanitary measures from the get-go. They are the voice of the convoy, if you will. What's it called? It's called it's the Conservative Party of Quebec. Conservative uh, Party of it's Quebec. A, okay. It's a, a led by Eric Durham, uh, and and they're now in second place amongst francophone voters. That's a huge problem for the CAC, which is why wow. two weeks ago the health minister was saying there's going to be no end for the vaccine passport. It's going to be here to stay, and yesterday they announced that it's coming out. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, um, what do you think? Victory? Victory for the protesters? We chased the police chief out of office. We chased Aaron O'Toole away. What, what do you think, Kate? Yeah. It depends what you think the goal of the protesters actually is, and I would, you know, I would hazard a guess that depending on who you talk to, it's entirely different. For some people, it's getting rid of mandates. For other people, it's overthrowing the government, right? So I'm not sure that they are necessarily able to claim credit. They're benefiting significantly from two things, timing uh, of cases generally going down, uh, and of course, public opinion uh, going going their way, uh, suggesting, you know, we need to learn to live with, with COVID. Uh, we need to look at a way that we can kind of responsibly start reducing restrictions on people. So they are benefiting from that. Is it because of them? I'm not entirely convinced. Uh, but I do think that there is probably some heel dragging going on, especially at the federal level, to do anything uh, to be seen to be caving in to, to what the protesters are asking for, despite, you know, science and evidence uh, suggesting that we are in a position to move on. Provinces are, of course, looking to move ahead with this. I do think the feds are reluctant to do so because uh, they're worried about the political optics. Okay. We'll be right back. Part two, your political fix on The Rob Snow Show on City News. Well, we all loved our rock t-shirts growing up, right? It was our badge that, hey, we went to this concert. We knew that band inside out. So we, we kept doing that and kept promoting that. What's, what's sort of happening now is that audience is dying. <laughs> I always say the earth is flat. <laughs> so the 60s rockers are falling off the end of the earth. So you don't see as big a sales anymore because my audience is disappearing. What's sort of helping uh, to promote that history is the kids are buying vinyl. And luckily we have a vinyl shop in the neighborhood here, uh, Record Center. So what's happening is I've seen kids come in with their dad and the dad say, hey, do you have any Beatles shirts? Do you have any CBGB? Do you have any of this? I said, well, why? Uh, you know, he said, well, because my daughter's into it. She's wearing my T-shirt. So slowly it's coming back, right? The kids are, I think, getting fed up with the generic music that's out there. And they want to click into something that, first of all, links them to their parents, something that they uh, thoroughly enjoy now, and maybe they're passing it on to their grandkids. Pandemic has been a couple of things, definitely hard on everybody. So much uh, 
uh, messaging that's out there that people don't understand, stats that every day, Jesus Murphy, like I'm getting a headache just reading this stuff, right? So, so really it was just trying to understand where we were going to go from there. The city of Ottawa all of a sudden said, everybody's got to wear a mask. You got to wear it on the bus. People were scrambling, okay? And I had, uh, the store next door had really big windows, so I just flooded the window with masks. Well, that was the, the activity that saved the business. Uh, people were coming in buying two, three, four masks at a time at 20 bucks a pop here. <laughs> but my masks were so different. They were the Rolling Stones, Beatles, Queen, all the pop culture. Everything else out there was medical masks. <laughs> and right, so people said, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to show my rock and roll. So it became the new, the new T-shirt as far as I'm concerned. Well, what I've done, I'm Hindenburg. I'm at, now at uh, 1114A Wellington Street, which is next door to the Fab Gear store. And the reason I've changed names, I've rebranded the store, is because I was planning on retiring. And, and in December, I went, oh, I'm not going to retire. But I've committed to changing what the store is about. So I came up with a new name, Fab Gears Rock Shop, where legends are dressed, <laughs> and essentially get that message out. I prefer if the shirt don't fit, you come in, you try another one on. People like to feel the fabrics with clothing. It's amazing. You all come in and go, Oh, I love that. Oh, can I try this? So that's the big difference. I'm not out to make a gazillion dollars. I stick the way I am, old school. I take cash, we take cards. Come on in and talk to the owner. Strong voice. Strong opinions. The Rob Snow Show returns on Rogers TV and City News. 101.1 FM and 1310 AM. Yeah, we're back, part two, your political fix. With Carl Belanger, the president of Traxion Strategies, and Kate Harrison, the vice chair at Summa Strategies. Okay, let's talk about uh, Pierre, I'm running for Prime Minister, Polyev, who now says he supports peaceful protests but not blockades. Let's listen to this. I stand with those peaceful and law-abiding protesters, including truckers, who are championing their freedoms and their jobs while holding personally accountable any individuals who behave badly, break laws, or participate in blockades of critical economic infrastructure. I've always been against blockades, and I still am now, because I don't believe you can gain your freedom by blocking someone else's. So yes to peaceful protests, no to blockades. Okay. What do you think about that, Carl? That more, I don't know, nuanced position, I guess, if you want, from Pierre Polyev. Carl, what do you think? Uh, it's a more nuanced position, but it's not based in reality. Uh, <laughs> I mean, All right. these protests are not peaceful. They're not law-abiding. They're breaking court orders. They're parked illegally. They're idling illegally. I mean, you you know, you can list all the regulations, laws, and bylaws that are being broken right oh, yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to split hair because he's feeling the heat a bit from some of the recent developments that we've seen, uh, especially along the borders and especially in Couts, Alberta, where, where the RCMP had to uh, seize weapons and, 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 and foil a plot to murder our CMP officers. Yeah. These are the people he was associating with early on. Maybe the perception was like that. Uh, maybe that's not what he meant. But the reality is that when you pick a side, you pick a side. And uh, he's going to try to work hard to distance himself from all of that now. Okay. Kate? Yeah, politics is not a great place for nuanced messaging. <laughs> right? You're yeah. explaining you're losing. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I think the Conservatives and, and Pierre Polyev need to be very cautious about how they talk about restrictions uh, while also talking about the convoy. And I think the sooner uh, that that can be divorced, and we saw Candace Bergen, for example, uh, take a very different tone uh, shortly after becoming interim leader where, you know, she was saying uh, restrictions should come to an end, uh, but what's happening with the convoy is it really can't continue and it's time to go home. You've been heard. So uh, I think there was a political calculation there happening for, for Mr. Polyev, certainly at the outset of this whole thing, trying to tap into a sentiment and a feeling that many Canadians have around restrictions and COVID fatigue, but that is very divorced now from uh, what the convoy has become, blockades, and including what's happening uh, here in Ottawa. So I think that uh, he's trying to walk back a little bit, it seems, but um, I think people 
will be quick to point out his, his prior support. Maybe too late uh, for that. Yeah. Yeah. The I, nuance I will be lost, I guess, Kate. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, premiers accelerating their plans to ease restrictions. Carl with a great example about what's happened in, in Quebec. How do you think the public views this? Do they view it as capitulation? Um. I mean, some of them will certainly. Uh, I mean, you look, the population is divided on that. I mean, yeah. there's been so many conflicting messaging, <laughs> you know, coming out from the different governments over the past weeks, past months. I mean, six weeks ago in Quebec, we had a curfew. Suddenly, we're opening everything up. Uh, what has changed? Uh, well, okay, it's going down a little bit, but we still have more deaths right now daily than we've had during the third and fourth wave. Uh, so, so when the, the measures were stricter, so people are really confused. So, so there's a part, a, por, a portion of the population that thinks it's going too fast. There's a portion of the population who's thinking it's going too slow, and then I think there's a, a bigger portion of the population who thinks it's about the right pace, while crossing the fingers and hoping that they're right this time. Yeah. And politicians say, "I don't, I don't want Ottawa coming to my city." Right. So, uh, Kate, what do you think, Kate? Yeah, I I think if you're looking at if you're looking at this as capitulation, you're probably already a pretty political person. I think All generally right. what's happening in Ottawa right now is a bit of a bubble. I know it's making national news, but how people go about living their day-to-day lives with COVID, I think is very different than the conversation we're having around restrictions here in the city. Okay. I think that generally speaking, people are ready, and public opinion data backs this up, Angus Reid and others, people are ready People are ready. moving yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I don't think that they necessarily view their own circumstances, ability to travel, which, by the way, really productive news yesterday in terms of uh, trying to bring a sense of normalcy back to, to international travel. But they're not looking at uh, their own governance over their day-to-day life in relation to what's happening here in Ottawa. So I think that the premiers are definitely on the right track uh, in terms of catching up with public opinion, in terms of where we ought to be and learning to live with COVID rather than consistently having the accordion of open up, shut down, open up, lockdown. What a time. What a time. What a time to be in the national capital region. I logged on to the BBC, I have the BBC News app on my phone, and one of the top stories on the BBC News app was the resignation of Peter Slowly, the chief of police. <laughs> like BBC Incredible. News is covering the resignation of the chief of the Ottawa Police Service. Anyway, okay, very interesting uh, discussion, folks. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. All the best. Always a pleasure. Yeah, bye-bye. Carl Belanger is the president of Traxion Strategies, and Kate Harrison is the vice chair of Summa Strategies. And the talk back hour is next. Grab a line. It was packed yesterday. It was hard to get through yesterday. Four free lines available right now for you. at 750-1310. The talk back hour on the Rob Snow Show on City News.
Coast City News. CIWW 1310 AM in Ottawa. And CJET 1011 FM in Smith Falls and the Valley. Number one for local news in Ottawa and the Valley. This is City News. Now on 1011 FM and 1310 AM. It's Wednesday, February 16th. Good morning. I'm Andrew Boyle. Right now in Ottawa, minus 8 degrees. In Smith Falls, it's minus 5. And here's what's making news in Ottawa and the Valley. The head of the Ottawa Police Services Board says you never want to see someone leave an organization as Peter slowly did during an ongoing situation like this trucker protest. Dean says the board did what they could to provide the chief what he asked for to end this peacefully. The mutual agreement to end Slowly's contract was mutual and an agreement means the settlement paid to Slowly to terminate the contract is not going to be made public. Dean says the culture inside the police department is not easy and Slowly certainly received a lot of pushback in his leadership. That's one resignation. Deans was asked on the Rob Snow show if she would resign. She says no. If somebody wants to use this as a political uh, knife to stab me with, they can. But I do not think under the Act, under the Police Services Act, or my performance, they could point to something that I have done um, that, or, or something I haven't done or something that I've done wrong. Uh, Deans does say we need more action to end this protest. She said half measures seem to have been done at some of the protest points over the last three weeks, but never to completion. City News Time at 10.02. Now your forecast with meteorologist Jill Taylor. For Ottawa, the Valley Smith Falls today, the clouds will take charge. A strong gusty wind out of the south. Gusts could exceed 50 kilometers per hour. We'll climb to plus 5 this evening and then stay near 5 degrees this evening and overnight with that rain moving in after about 9 o'clock tonight. For today, the guaranteed high this evening, plus 5. And right now in Ottawa, minus 8 in Smith Falls, it's minus 5 degrees. The annual pace of inflation topped 5% for the first time in more than 30 years nationally, but it was almost 6% more in Ottawa. Now here's more on the national number. Statistics Canada reports the annual inflation rate rose from 4.8% in December to 5.1% last month. The main culprits, prices for housing, gasoline and groceries. Gas prices were up 31.7% compared with January of 2021. Grocery prices rose 6.5% for the largest yearly increase since May of 2009. If you factor out gas prices, the annual rate of inflation would have been 4.3%. Don Kelly, The Canadian Press. City News Time, 10.03. The Ontario government will not fulfill the 2018 election promise to lower your electricity bill by 12%. A report on hydro bills released today by the Financial Accountability Office says between 2018 and 2021, the average bill increased by 4.3%, and that will continue to increase by 2% every year. The report says the Ministry of Energy staff informed them the government won't cut bills by 12%, from the 2018 level, but that it is meeting its commitment of making bills 12% lower than they would have been under the former Liberal government's Fair Hydro plan. Now, the Energy Minister, Todd Smith, says in a statement the FAO report confirms bills will be 12% lower than they would have been under that Liberal plan. The report, though, says from 2020 to 2040, nine different energy and electricity subsidy programs will end up costing the province a total of $118.1 billion. The federal government has outlined measures included in the Emergency Act, including one making it illegal to bring any children to an anti-government blockade. Blockades are not allowed in a long list of places, including Parliament Hill. Trucks, RVs and other vehicles with Canadian flags and banners reading Freedom continue to clog Wellington Street in front of Parliament Hill. Some protesters calling the Emergencies Act declared this week nothing but a government scare tactic. I'm Andrew Boyle for News Anytime. Follow up online at ottawa.citynews.ca. Talk back. Hello. On the Rob Snow Show. The phone lines are open at 613-750-1310. Now, the Rob Snow Show continues. Yeah, talk back hour. Let's get it going. Chief Slowly 
out as Ottawa's police chief. Love your reaction to that. About time, should have been fired. He's being scapegoated. He's the fall guy, whatever. And what do you think about the proposed measures in the Emergencies Act uh, based on what you may have heard in the news about those? 750-1310, 750 Let's get uh, right to it here. Deborah. You're on City News. Good morning, Deborah. Yeah, Rob. Yeah. The, 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 the Prime Minister of Canada, I hate to call him that, is a real dangerous man. Okay. And how you find out is if you go through the Mark Norman case, General Vance, the Lavalin, and the Wee scandal, okay. you'd never get a, uh, an answer out of them. It was Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was way to snow. <laughs> now, here's what's happening out here. All right. There's a big balloon and it's ready to bust. People want out of this. Yes. They don't care if horse manure is coming next. They want out of it, and they're not taking this seriously. Now, when this is over, buckle up for the summer because we've got high prices, high rent. Everybody's lost their kids, their house, their apartment, their job, their savings, and also their businesses. Wait and see what's going to happen. Oh, you think it only gets worse from here, Deborah? It's going to get worse. And, you know, I actually shake when I think about it. Because okay. once this is over, we're still in pain. He's using the COVID-19 to control people. He's using this emergency thing to control people. Now, here's another thing. If I wanted to go up on Parliament Hill to protest against something with cost of living... The price of margarine. Yeah. Is he going to arrest everybody because you don't agree with him? How do we get them out of this emergency thing? Voting them out? Why do people bring this idiot in every All right. time? Okay, on okay, okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. You think it's going to get worse, though? Let's uh, let's move along here. Seven five zero thirteen ten. Brian in Ottawa. Brian. Hey, Rob. Hey, Brian. Well, well, this emergency act is just the renamed War Measures Act. Well, it's a different piece. Yeah, it's a different uh, piece. Uh, uh, yeah. It's a different piece, but it's not much different. It's, it's quite close. a bit different. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> However, right, what, okay. he, what he's he's doing, uh, Carl and uh, what was her name again? Kate. You said on that? Kate. Yep. They got something wrong. They okay. said he's got like uh, a week so it can pass Parliament. Well, he's got a week, according to constitutional experts, to do whatever he wants, unencumbered by Parliament, until it is tabled, voted on, and then goes through both houses. So he's got free reign right now for a week. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's how it how it works, Brian. Uh, let's move along here. Jason is just is on the road, which I suppose could be anywhere. Jason. Good day, Rob. How G'day. you doing? It goes, sir. Yes. Uh, nobody wants to comment on slowly being out yet, uh, but nevertheless, slowly's out as chief of police, and you know, I guess we're a few days closer to the Emergencies Act coming into force. What do you What do you think about any of it? Well, I could get the truckers to leave tomorrow. You could? Okay. Yeah. You know how? No. Nope. Let us have our day in court. Day Let in us court. Okay. have our day in court fully, fully televised, no back room, nothing. We can talk about mandates, which they always lose, and we can talk about the safety of vaccines, which it seems to be... You know, I, I like you, Rob, but you're pretty one-sided when it comes to vaccines. You won't even listen to the other side. Okay. Like, you, you've never had a guest on talking about boosting your immune system. I threw away my health card two years ago when, I, when all this started. I'm like, nope, this is not going to be good. And I got my immune system boosted oh. at the health food store. Oh, okay. And right. I fear nothing. I fear nothing. Good for you. And sir. I've been working the whole time. All right. Okay. Okay. I, you know, I, I just follow my doctor's advice, sir. Um, Catherine in Carlton Place, I guess it is. It Carlton Hi. Place, Catherine? Hi, Rob. Thank Hi, you for Catherine. allowing me to vent. Go ahead, um, Catherine. Yes, yeah. yeah, slowly def- had to go. I mean, three weeks in, nothing done. No. Seeing a couple of cops initially in the car laughing. Oh, they're not hurting anybody. They can- like, even the cops got into it like it was a party atmosphere. This was earlier on, mind you. Of course, they are all violent. When it's violence, it melts at mental health of those living around them. It's destructive. As every- I'm just not going to repeat this, but... And as far as the, the city of Ottawa, the people involved, Watson saying we're all involved. Other people say, well, no, we did everything we could. It's not rocket science. Just sit in the vehicles. You're allowing into the downtown port. Anything could happen. They could even have crashed into the Are they all nuts? 
I mean, really? That's sorry. That's my sickness. The whole thing. Like, where is logic? Or who are they? And they right, swear that once they said, "Oh, this is going to bring commerce to the area." Like, what? Anyways, that's all I want. All right, Thank Catherine, you, you feel better now? I do. Thank yeah, you that's for good. allowing okay, me to do that. I don't. For. That's what I'm here for. Okay, Joe uh, is up next. Ottawa, Joe. Joe. Uh, uh, yeah, Joe. Hi. Hi, Rob. Hi, Joe. Uh, Rob, you're gonna have to help me, okay? I'm, I'm, okay. I, 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 I'm, ner- I'm nervous. You're nervous, okay? Okay, yeah, yes, I am. Okay, listen, listen. Um, the prime minister recently said something, and he, I felt that he was using the veterans to boast his position. He said something in the news. I couldn't, didn't have the heart to listen fully, but he said something about the war memorial yeah. and it being desecrated, yeah. and he was saying that that wasn't fair to the vets. Okay, you remember that part? I, I, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Okay, now let, let, me, let me bring you back a bit further. Okay. Town hall meetings, town hall meetings. Remember that? There was, uh, an, there was an injured Afghan. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and he, he mentioned in percentages what body parts he lost. Okay? And he brought that up because he was... He was right, and the, gov- the, the government and uh, veterans groups were still in court, right? Uh, I, something I, to do. I, I, I wasn't following that, but yeah. what really hurt me, what really hurt me, Rob, is a vet, okay? He said we can't afford it or whatever. We can't it afford it. You're yeah. asking for too much. That's All he right. was doing is making reference to the same. They're yeah. bringing in refugees. I understand that. But they're getting more medical attention than me. Now, I bring you back to the, what was said recently. How yes, dare yes. he stand on the injured body of the veteran? And use that to boast his position that he actually likes the veteran. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I remember. I, I now fair. I remember. This was when he would. Yeah, this was when he would do these cannot, kind of cross country tours. Yeah. The word veteran. He did not use that word to boast himself at all. All right, all right, Joe. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, you remember. I remember that when he would do the cross country tours and you know, kind of do these round table things. You're asking for more than we can afford, I believe, is what the line was at the time. You you remember that, David? Yeah, yeah. That's what he said. Yep. Yeah. They're asking for more than we're able to give right now. I okay. think that was yeah. it. All right, Ray in Ottawa. Ray. You're hey, how's it going, school. man? It goes. Yep. All right. I just have uh, like when the all Trudeau turned around and said uh, fringe minority uh, people are protesting. Yeah. My father was a World War II vet, fought in Germany, got shot twice, and survived. And you reminded me it's the fringe minority that went to war to fight for the 90% of the people that didn't go to the war. So, you know, bashing people and protesting, I mean, it's all got to come to an end sooner or later, but we just need the right leader at the end of the day. I mean, people just want to move on here. Yeah, they do. And they do. Yeah. That's all my, That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, that, that When he said that, fringe minority really set off a lot of people. People well, are still you know, bringing like, that it's up. It's not 90% of the population went to World War II. It's 10%. So at the end of the day, maybe the 10% have the vote of your freedom. I mean, I mean, you. my father put his life. His brother died over there. Uh, I, I heard the horrible, you know, if, you, if he's probably turning in his grave right now. Uh, my old man, uh, it's just unbelievable. I mean, uh, we come to this state, we were a great country. We were the, uh, the, the talk of the town at one time. Uh, now we're, we're, we're you don't not. Think so? Okay. All right. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank Take you, care, sir. Yep, yep. You too. Jeff in Canada. You're on City News Line 4. Jeff, go ahead. You're on City News. Hey, I'd like to talk about the Chiefs uh, leaving. Yep. He was he was an escape goat. He's a scapegoat? Yep. Okay. He had, he had everything he was doing was right. There's nothing you could do when people use children as shields. There's such big protesters put a child at arm's length. What yeah. a joke. Okay. And you can't have them go in there crushing people because we have civil liberty and we didn't want to look like China or any of the other countries that when protesters yeah. go and protest to run them down. What about the... Um you know the bullying of people in the surrounding area, though. You know the you know yelling at they people had, and taking you know ripping masks off of people. Um, they, you know acting like jerks in the grocery stores. We had grocery stores in Centertown had to close because of the way people were behaving. You know. Yeah, they those were the people that had nothing to do with the rally. There are anarchies. Those I admit the protesters should have pushed them out. They should have they should have went after these guys who were doing yeah. it. But okay. they use them and the, and the fuel, fuel, you know, the jerry cans, people walking, you know, right in front of the police with, with you know, jerry cans full of fuel. 
you know. Uh, were they? I thought they were water. Well, wh- whatever. Were getting them in the back Whatever. Door. Just you know. You, you can't. You can't. You can't do one or the other. So you have to keep a calm, peaceful thing until a solution well, came. For, for how long? Not even a for how long? For how long? Till the May two four long weekend. Yeah, as long Till as Canada Day, day. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, but Labor you know Day, what? just what, you know? You know what's going to happen? If someone gets hurt, you're going to blame the people who went in and started it. You all, oh, why'd you let the police, you could have talked a little bit longer. All your bleeding hearts don't understand policing. You just think, go in, do it. Oh, someone got killed. Oh, we're going to blame the police. Look at what they did. But they don't look at the long run to sit there and say, we, you know, let's talk it out first. But no, they're like, oh, you're, you're breaking my neighborhood. Well, I can't walk safe. Okay. Grow a bunch of kahunas and walk around a little tougher. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. All right. That, wow. Pretty quick quarter hour there. Let's keep it going. Another 45 minutes or so here. Talk back hour. Chief Slowly out as the chief of police. And uh, more details on the measures proposed for the Emergencies Act. This is the Rob Snow Show. City News. So right now you have people walking up and down Wellington Street right now and they're wearing vests that say police liaison and they are giving out pamphlets to the um, to the truckers the, or, or the protesters and it says Ottawa Police Service notice to demonstration participants and it reads you must leave the area now. Anyone blocking streets or assisting others in the blocking streets are committing a criminal offense, you may be arrested. 
You must immediately cease further unlawful activity or you will face charges. If you are arrested, you may be released on bail depending on factors contained in Part what is that, 16 of the Criminal Code. The people of Ottawa are being denied the lawful use, enjoyment, and operation of their property, and you are causing businesses to close. That is mischief under the criminal code. Charges and or convictions related to unlawful activity associated with the demonstration may lead to denial in crossing the USA border. The Federal Emergencies Act allows for the regulation or prohibition of travel to and from within a specified area. This means that anyone coming to Ottawa for the purpose of joining the ongoing demonstration is breaking the law. The act also provides police with a number of measures, including the ability to seize vehicles that are part of this demonstration. Ontario law now prohibits interference with any critical infrastructure. Uh, and it goes, anyone committing these illegal actions could face fines or be required to appear in court. Commercial vehicle driver's licenses and private driver's licenses can be suspended or revoked and they're walking up and down the street and they're giving them out and some people are saying thank you very much and others are kind of taking them and throwing them away right away and that's kind of where we are and uh, some news organizations say tow trucks are standing by uh, which I am surprised to learn right now but George has called in from Prescott George you're on City News oh hi um hi George I'm I'm uh, looking at Chief Slowly there yeah and he and he gets put out yeah but you figure it out, he's the only person from politicians and such and that has actually come and talked to the truckers. We have a, we have a prime minister that every time there's a, an issue in the world, he hides. Um, he's done it during the, uh, the um, Indigenous Day. He went and instead of going to, instead of going to a, a rally, instead of that, he went and went surfing. He knew the truckers were coming. He stays hidden. Nobody comes out and talks to them. They, you hear the uh, Trudeau and Ford and the mayor of Ottawa, all of them saying, get out, leave, get out, leave. But not one of them are coming out and actually negotiating with the truckers. Okay. And Chief Slowly's been the one that's been been left to do it all. But So you think he's been hung out to dry or what? Yeah, uh, yeah pretty much. You do? Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, by the by politicians? The politicians. Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, even the politician of his own city, his mayor, because I've, I've heard the mayor, how he says, you know, talks about the truckers and the convoy and stuff, but he won't come out and negotiate. The only one who has negotiated anything has been Chief Slowly. So, uh, I mean, well, I mean, the mayor, is, the mayor has used this intermediary, right, to yeah. try and get them out of the residential areas anyway. For, so. for how, how long did it take for any politician to speak to the truckers? I mean, uh, we have a we have a prime minister that that every time there's an issue, he runs and hides, and that's right, not right. leadership. Okay. That's that's cowardice. Fair enough. Okay, and, thank you. And, you know. Thank you, George. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, hung out to dry. Uh, slowly, has been hung out to dry. Joe, in Ottawa. Joe. Morning, Joe. No, Joe. Let's uh, go to the other Joe. Line one, Joe. That's you, Joe. So again, uh, when you're talking about all the emergencies, you forgot there. There's also a climate emergency. Just in case oh, climate emergency, that. homeless emergency. Yes, we have many emergencies. Yeah. Opioids. So, yep, um, yep, a lot of I'm emergencies. Actually calling is uh, Diane Deans. Since she's running for mayor, yet she can't even pick out the proper person to lead the police force, but she wants to be our mayor. And again, with the non-disclosure, here we go again. A whole bunch of money that our taxpayers' money going out mm -hmm. the door, but we don't know nothing about how much it is or nothing like that. Okay. And just one other, just one other question for you rob if the truckers are not vaccinated you know you can't get on a flight how do you get to ottawa to protest if you can't get on a flight if you don't bring your truck right okay what your point being joe well, what's your point there i don't understand but, uh, if you want to where are these guys if you can't fly from anywhere no a lot of these guys are from bc yeah, Alberta, yeah, yeah. all over the country so how yeah. do you get to ottawa if you can't take a flight yeah so that's yeah. why they have to take their truck and get here and protest so when you get here where are you supposed yeah, to park yeah well well <laughs> you know maybe this is a you know maybe this is a that's part of the planning failure as well right we don't want for space in ottawa you know there's lots of places they could have parked they could yeah you know and they could have they, they yeah. could have and I understand. Protest. You know, look, if the, let's say there's 400 people who remain here, right? Put 400 people on the lawn of Parliament Hill. It's not even a big protest. 
My well, goodness, right. the pro-life protest every year is 25,000 people, Joe. Right? I understand. You know, again, um, you know, 400 people. Who cares about 400 people protesting on Parliament Hill? It doesn't even register. Uh, the, 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 the problem is the vehicles. The vehicles have to go somewhere. That's the and big problem. The prime, yes, and all the prime minister had to do talk to the guys, and maybe they but, would have worked but, out know, half a deal, and everything would have been over. But yeah. yet the prime minister skates on everything. He's I don't like, know. Nobody yeah. seems to hold him accountable for anything he does. Like, it amazes me. Well, I don't know. They have him at 16% in the polls, so it's not like the people are, are not paying attention to it. John Wright said, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is as popular as Brian Mulroney was in his final days, right? And you remember Brian Mulroney quit, made way for Kim Campbell. They won th The progressive conservatives won three seats for crying out. That's how popular Justin Trudeau is right now. Kate in Ottawa. Kate. Hi, good morning. Hi, I want Kate. to talk about uh, Slowly's resignation. Slowly, yep, yep. And um, he resigned, and he resigned the day after the Emergency Act of the federal government was implemented, and I believe that that was a huge part of his resignation. Diane Deans even said it was a mutual agreement. Um, I think that um, because Slowly was following the Constitution and uh, – he agrees with the Geneva Convention of not stealing, confiscating fuel and food, Rule 50, um, which is a war crime. Um, I think that he had had enough of the tension between the hundreds of, of people in Ottawa who, the elitists, um, who are against this. I, over the thousands upon thousands of protesters who come to Ottawa, mm -hmm. um, who are in Ottawa. I've been down to the protest seven times. It is a peaceful, loving protest. Um, the fact that now you bring your children to teach them about democracy in a loving way, um, that we are now vilified for doing that. Um, I'm going to show my son that what Justin Trudeau is doing is completely wrong, and it's tyranny. Okay. The real so when can the when, when can the people around Kent Street get their neighborhood back? Um, it's easy. End all mandates. Oh, it's really okay. easy. Can you tell me what mandate, based on science, should still be here? Well, all the uh, mandates, you know, uh, they're all they've all been proven not to work. Lockdowns you know, don't work. Okay, I'm not Mass here to I'm not here to work. support or oppose mandates. But you are. You said you were you were biased. You said the day before you left for two days, you publicly announced that your position is bias, and and that scared me. Uh, it, it really did scare me that you okay. said that. Wouldn't you say you're biased? You Wouldn't you say it. you're biased, Kate? Okay. But I don't. I'm not, I don't claim to be working for a city news. Yeah. I I, I was. I claim to be a broad. That, I I am a when broadcaster. You, when you said. Okay. I do an opinion that. show, Kate. You know yes, the difference sir, between I'm, opinion and news, right, Kate? Sir, understand you understand that. the can difference I, between a news reporter I, and a columnist. No, I I'm do, done sir, with. And I, I like I'm, the yeah, I'm done with you. Goodbye. My gosh, you get under my skin every time you call. Uh, it's halftime. Rob Snow Show, City News.
in Ottawa and the Valley. This is City News, now on 1011 FM and 1310 AM. It's Wednesday, February 16th. Good morning. I'm Andrew Boyle. Right now in Ottawa, minus 6 degrees and Smith Falls, minus 1. Here's what's making news this hour. Ottawa police have started handing out notices to those along Wellington Street in this protest, outlining they're taking part in an illegal activity. If they don't leave, they could be charged under the Emergencies Act. That was just put in place this week. Now, the Prime Minister was asked if police will use force to end the protest. Justin Trudeau told reporters this morning, no, I'm not going to use force. The decision will be made by police doing their jobs the right way possible way. Another significant drop in the number of people in hospital in Ontario today due to COVID-19, a drop of 147 patients. ICU numbers, though, down by 20. The province is reporting 47 additional COVID deaths today. 2,532 new cases of the virus in Ontario, 184 of them in Ottawa, 55 in Leeds, Grenville, Lanark, 34 in eastern Ontario, 11 new cases in Renfrew County. Police say that trailer loaded with a cargo of firearms has now been found in Peel region. This was the one we told you about earlier this week, stolen Sunday morning in Peterborough. They say the trailer carried more than 2,000 guns. It's being sent back to Peterborough now. Police there say officers and the manufacturer will go through that load and determine if any of the weapons are missing. City News Time, 1032. I'm Andrew Boyle for News Anytime. Follow up online at ottawa.citynews.ca. Talk back. Hello. On the Rob Snow Show. The phone lines are open at 613-750-1310. Now, the Rob Snow Show continues. So two big stories. Slowly out as the police chief. Gathering reaction to that. What do you think about that? About time, should have been fired. He's a scapegoat, fall guy, and uh, the measures in the Emergencies Act. Uh, based on what you know about them, what do you think about them? 750 1310 Seven five zero thirteen ten. It's a jam packed show today. Victor in Ottawa. Victor. Victor. Yeah. Hi, Rob. Hi, Victor. How you doing? <laughs> I'm okay, Victor. Thank you. Oh uh, yes, the last uh, the last call was kind of like feisty, but it's okay. Feisty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's she's passionate opinion. about her opinions. I disagree with her opinions. She says I'm I'm biased. Uh, yeah. I am. No. It's an opinion show. Uh, uh, we all express our opinions here, and may the you know the the, the best person win in the battle of ideas. That's oh, all. Okay. That's all it is, Victor. That's all it is. Doesn't have yeah. to be um, personal or disagreeable. I know. I know. I know. All right. Anyways, um, as for the chief, um, yeah. he was he was in a tough position, right? Oh sure. Uh, it's it's yeah. understandable. Yeah. Um, policing is. It's difficult in the crime we are in right now. If it was like 10, 15 years ago, of course, we would have known what would have happened. But in the whole uh, new dispensation we are in now, policing is quite tough. Because anything they do that is bad will be public news for three weeks nonstop. Mm. And with the emergency acts coming into place, he doesn't want to be the police chief who, who uh, spearheaded the snatching away of kids ah, okay. or the destruction of properties that will emanate. Because once you're pulling out those trucks, if you're going to tow them, you're going to destroy those trucks, right? You know that. And it's going to be a serious issue. So he doesn't want to oversee that. And I know he's a, he's a wise person, so he made the smart decision. Now, what's going to happen is this. What I'm going to, what I'm, I'm foreseeing, because I knew this was going to happen. Right. This has been Peaceful. Yes, it might have been um, 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 mentally draining for the, the residents, but it has not been physically draining for them. Now, what's going to happen is if the police decides to move in, there's going to be confrontation. Then there, there might be violence. And then the protest will now turn to a riot. That is what the chief has seen, and he doesn't want to oversee that. Sure, sure. And the government is torn in between what we and what we do. If, if you recall, they just asked Justin just Trudeau, are you going to use force? And I'm going to tell you this. Let me be frank with you. The media is egging him. 
they are the ones egging him. You're asking him oh, really? questions. Really? Yeah. Yes, when you stand. What do you about think the media people? wants to see the soldiers yes. in the streets and I'm blood in the you. streets I'm and telling you because trucks on fire and it, it, it's, it's good for ratings. It's good for ratings. Well, I don't know. So, so they're egging him, yeah. and if he's wise. He should just allow the police just play it calm, and then probably he's just going to give news on COVID in the next couple of days. Probably now, you know what? Um, the provinces are dropping off mandates. We are between with our doctor. We will we'll start dropping off mandates from March 12th. Or, let me just put a date there. When you put a date there, the people there will know, oh, okay, fine, we have been listening. Right, right, and then we okay. gra- gradually leave. But oh. if you are still looking at them as strange, yeah, it, it's insulting to them. All right. Got to Gotta go, Victor. Thank you. You made your yes. point, sir. You made your point. Thank you. Thank you. want to fit in a few more here. Uh, Steve in Ottawa South. Steve. Good morning, Robert. How are you? I'm okay. Steve, thank the you. The reason I'm calling today is not to talk about Chief Slowly, I just wanted to ask why Ottawa City Council weren't losing their minds with the counter protest and there was two Soviet era hammer and sickle flags there. Oh, okay. And we know the uh the Soviets were responsible for around a hundred million deaths, but right. maybe you know, they have a soft spot for commies. I don't know, uh Steve. Well, it's very right. possible, right? Yeah. How come, uh, also, how come the unions weren't supporting the truckers? Is well, that- I mean, you know, it, the union leadership right now, do you really think union leadership speaks up for the working class anymore, Steve? They should Does the be, union you know? leadership really stand up for the working class anymore? They should be. Yeah, I think, the, u- I think union leaders gave up on the working class a long time ago, Steve. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're really interested. They're they they they're filled with grandiosity now. That's my own opinion. Uh, Catherine, Lanner, Catherine. Uh, hi, Rob. Yep. Um, I put this whole situation directly on uh, Trudeau's shoulders. Okay. Um, there was no evidence that truckers, cross-border truckers, were bringing the disease or spreading the disease. Yeah. In this country. Yeah. He just did another one of his bully tactics and attacked a segment of society. And this time he picked on the wrong group. Okay. They stood up. Um, like, it's all his fault. He, he just has gone after people that have made a medical choice or a religious choice, uh, especially truckers. They're by themselves. They're, yes, they're yes, not we've been through this a hundred times over the last three weeks. Yeah, right? well, they're not so. spreading it, but he, he is, and now he's thrown Sure, more. but now it's been 20 days of this. Um, yeah, right? and he has done nothing. Right, so... He doubled down. He's going to, like, he is the one instigating violence. I disagreed with the air horns. Those are horrible. Right. And I don't blame the, the citizens of Ottawa for, uh, for not wanting that. Um, but these people are fighting for their jobs and their livelihoods. They have their children there because they are going to be directly affected when, they're, when their bread earners lose their jobs because they can't do what they have done for the last two years. Okay, so what do you think should happen then? Um, get rid of that mandate of nothing else. Right. They'll stop well, even if they get rid of that mandate, these cross-border truckers can't cross the border. You understand That's that, because right? because Justin Trudeau went to Joe Biden and asked him to do it. It was all Justin Trudeau's idea. It was all Justin Trudeau's idea. Yeah. Because he's picking on another group of Canadians. Okay. I don't know. Well, that's my um, opinion. You know, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. This one. Liz in Orleans. Liz, you're on City News. Liz. Sorry. Hi, Hi. Liz. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm calling to rebut a few of your callers. I recently retired, and I've discovered your show, which okay. is uh, very entertaining. Thank you. Um. First of all, your last caller, uh, she was talking about uh, Trudeau enlisting Biden to create this mandate. I mean, as if Trudeau has that type of control or sway on the American president, that's that's laughable. However, a few of the things that your callers are saying is that we need to try talking to these people to come to a peaceful resolution to get them to leave. We've been trying to talk for three weeks. Okay. That's not working. Yeah. 
but really, do you, do, you know, do you see Mr. Trudeau, like, I don't know, is, does Mr. Trudeau, you know, get out of the his motorcade, walk up to the Centennial Flame and just engage in a conversation with people? Does he have a Zoom call with... with well, maybe a with Zoom call. Tamara I, Lick I, and Pat King. Just, you know, if I was in just how is this security. supposed to go down? I don't know. Um, you if know, I there may be, you know what, there may be, there may be discussions happening behind the scenes that nobody mm-hmm. knows about. Who knows? I, do you know, up until a couple of days ago, I didn't think that the mayor would have Dean French as an intermediary to negotiate trying to get trucks out of Centertown, for example. We, who knows what's happening behind the scenes? I don't know. I don't have the foggiest idea. That's right. Uh, that came as a surprise, but yes. uh, it was an interesting development for sure. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, if I was in charge of this detail, I wouldn't allow him to go out to the Centennial Flame and meet with these people. They've got uh, signs yeah. threatening to lynch him, saying yeah. that that's yeah. what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, the other thing some of your callers said uh, one of them was defending the fringe minority by saying only 10 percent of uh, men went overseas during to fight during the second world war well in fact that was 10 percent of the entire population which included women and children it was one third of all men 15 years of age and older who attended so that was including those who were over who couldn't qualify because of their age uh, either 15 or too old or those who couldn't physically go at, go overseas so that's one third of the men so it wasn't a fringe minority right. that went and served gotcha and uh secondly the for the caller who says how else were they supposed to get here if they didn't bring their trucks why didn't you get in a car well i you know i th- yeah these yeah i guess like, but it's just ludicrous you know, arguments it, from it, these it, see the, it, then it's the vehicles that are creating the chaos Again, well, I come back to the you know a few uh, you know a few uh, yeah a few hundred people. Okay, that's a protest that you know it could be handled pretty easily handled. Absolutely, you know, and c- contained largely to you know the uh, the lawn of Parliament Hill, what there is of the lawn of Parliament Hill right now. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, big Agreed. trucks by the dozens uh, along Wellington Street, Kent Street, Metcalf Street. Not so much on O'Connor or uh, any of the other ones. They're Bay Street, for example. But um, it, it causes big problems. It exactly. causes big problems and has caused big problems. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're, they're try- Thank you, Liz. I hope you'll call again. The, you know, they're handing out these leaflets here now saying, you have to move, you have to move, you have to move. You know, this is where we're at. In 20 days into it, we are at the let's hand out some pamphlets phase. Uh, in Cantley, Jonathan. Oh, uh, hi, Rob. Thanks hi, for Jonathan. Call. You're welcome, sir. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, just 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 to be clear, I, I'm a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, okay. and I uh, fully support the decisions that um, uh, the Prime Minister has made and that the government has uh, decided to make um, following the Freedom Convoy. Okay. Um, but hypothetically. Uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. What if uh, the demands of of the Freedom Convoy, where uh, the they decided to say the um, you know the government said uh, uh, okay we'll, we'll we'll stop the passports, we'll stop the uh, mask mandates, we'll stop all all of that stuff. Uh, what would actually happen? Like what would be the outcome if if on day one the trucks pulled into the capital you know the national capital region, and the government said okay we're, we're going to shut this down. Uh, what would be, you know, what hypothetically, what would what would have been the, the outcome? Yeah, you kind of lost me there, Jonathan. I, I don't quite understand the nature of your question. So, um, if they had, if the government had given into the demand, had given into the them, yeah. From the do you, do you think everybody would have just said, "Okay, we win. Let, let's go home"? Is <laughs> right. Well, you know, like what what what, what would have happened, like. Um, uh, and this is just hypothetically, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe they would have came here, had a one weekend party, and went home, declared victory. I don't know. And then we wouldn't have the passports. We wouldn't have the mandates. Wouldn't have passports. Uh, would, wouldn't have mandates. Okay. Wouldn't have uh, you know, a, a, a hundred and fifty trucks and v- cars and vans and pickup trucks in the downtown core. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. and then would the science have changed on all of the you know the social distancing? Like, would that have? 
you know, made any difference. I, I, I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically, but hypothetically, okay. Yeah, okay. but what, 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 what would have been the difference if they had given in? What would have been uh, the difference in terms of, um, you know, the case counts, hospitalizations, these kinds of things, Jonathan? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've done this in the UK. The UK is wide open, right? No restrictions, no masks, no capacity limits. Nothing so, like so, that, so right? Maybe um, if, and if they hospitalizations are going down, case counts are going down, and life is getting back to whatever normal is going to look like after all of this. So then potentially if, if they had said, okay, let's, let's get rid of all of this stuff and gotten back to normal, um, we, we'd all be okay? Like it, the, yeah. The, yeah, okay. Well, what do you think, that, that, Jonathan? What do you think? They just had the Super Bowl in Los Angeles this 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 Sunday, right? Looked like everybody was having a good time. No masks. Right? Yeah. Florida's well, been open for what? A year? That that that's right. Yeah. And, and I mean, you can suggest things, you know, that that Sweden has done. Sweden, Norway, yeah. Denmark, yeah. all of these countries. You know, and these well, a lot of these countries, you know, you think Nordic countries, Denmark, um, they don't have hard right governments. They have center left governments. You know, everybody you know, as left wing as Mr. Trudeau's Liberal Party. Then they've said, time to move on. It's over. No more so, living like this. It's and that, according to the Angus Reid Institute, Jonathan. Thank you for your yeah. call. That's not a. That's not a fringe minority opinion to want to get back to normal and mandates. And still, if vulnerable people feel that they have to wear a mask or socially distance or not go to restaurants or whatever the case might be, do that. Take care of the frail elderly? Of course. The Angus Reid Institute survey says that's the majority opinion now. That's where most Canadians are now. Now, the question is, do you do it because 100 Mack trucks pulled into downtown Ottawa and said we're not leaving? Until we get what we want. That's a different thing altogether. All right, we'll be right back. Rob Snow Show, City News. So the birth of Absinthe was uh, 2002, I think, 2003. And I was working at Urban Bistro um, happily, uh, where uh, Allium is now. Uh, and then uh, the space where Holland Cafe was uh, came up it's on the corner of Spencer and Holland and uh, I spoke to the landlord and there's a lot of interest from a lot of other people but he and I just you know got along super well and he put a lot of faith in me so uh, Carmen Turner is his name he uh, he gave me the lease to the place and, and really pretty much gave me all the equipment in the place so I was really lucky I've been really lucky with landlords that way, actually, both my current landlord and Carmen Turner, because um, if there hadn't been Carmen Turner, there wouldn't have been Absinthe. So we were there for a few years uh, and just sort of outgrew the place, and then now we're here. It's obviously been tough, and it's been tough for everyone. I mean, that's the, you know, for it's the, been the big democratic sweep of, like, in restaurants and the hospitality and the arts that we were talking about earlier. It's like everybody's been impacted pretty much the same. Um, from everybody that I talked to, we're down 80, 75, 80 percent. We're and we're climbing out now. Um, I think the one of the saddest things is like we like everybody. We went down to two employees from 25, um, and we're now at four, and we're bringing two new people on this week, so we'll be at six. So it's you know little steps. So it's been tough. It's you know. Um, I've got the most expensive uh, clubhouse ever here because some days you come and you don't do any business, but you're here. But I'm, I'm grateful for what I do have. I think everybody's optimistic now, um, n not necessarily just about the vaccine, but about like the, the vaccine, spring, being able to be outside. I think you're going to see a lot of like pop-up things happen in parking lots and on sidewalks and all and like that rather than being actually inside somebody's commerce. I think we'd like to take it outside. Um, I know my staff would. My staff like the outdoors now all of a sudden, you know, all four of us, um, six soon. 
Uh, but um, we'll, we'll be doing stuff, some business in the patio in the parking lot, and we have a patio up front. And I think other, and I hope other restaurants and stores will do the same. I hope that they take advantage of like the sidewalk and doing sort of, you know, uh, guerrilla marketing and stuff like that and really shaking it up a bit. You can find us at Absinthe Cafe at 1208 Wellington Street West in Hindenburg, and you can find us online at absinthecafe.ca. Rob Snow Show. Have your say and call now. 613-750-1310. Nada in Ottawa. You're on City News. Hi. Hi. Well, uh, this is my first time that I'm listening to your show because wow. my friend sent me a link. That means I'm totally 100%. You want to vent. Un- okay. Unbiased, yeah. And right. I even don't know the name of the show, nor I do know are you mainstream media or not. I mean, but I... I, uh, I like to keep them guessing, Nada, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm true. <laughs> I'm from uh, Sarajevo. I survived the Sarajevo series of okay. thousand days. Yeah. I know what and how and what it takes to came from pretty normal life to the state of war, right? Sure. And we had a similar scenario of the uh, what triggered the war, but it's different background totally. And uh, being uh, having been through that experience and. I came here and have great respect for this country only and nothing else. And seeing all this, it really leaves me so sad. Uh, that's a, a main feeling. But then upset, yeah. confused, and a little bit afraid. I, I, uh, a little bit afraid. Like okay. A little bit, yeah. All right. What are you afraid uh, about? What I'm afraid? Uh, well, I'm afraid of... Uh, uh, losing control and it takes uh, we have a saying that it takes only seven days between uh, democracy and anarchy mm. no it takes only seven meals seven meals yeah yeah seven yeah, meals yeah. between yeah. the democracy and anarchy it sounds like a tree uh, you know a little bit uh, <laughs> uh, shallow but it's uh, it can be true but uh, uh you always think it happens some, somewhere else, somebody else, for different reasons, you yeah. know, we yeah. are united, we are strong, we are rich, uh, and all that. But my main, uh, why I'm confused, I'm confused, I can't even come to the senses that the mainstream media uh, turned into something as as it is now, like CBC, most uh, that's probably what yeah, the only well, RCTV. I yeah, don't know, yeah. but CBC, the national, was my main source all these twenty years I've been here, and they can't even now. I can't believe they don't. Well, I'm not here to defend or criticize. Yeah, you know, the I CBC, know they don't, so. but the, the yeah. people need information. This is all sure. uh, based on uh, uh, lack or wrong information, you know, and but then. We are getting where we are here now. Um, what's my point? Uh, I think that uh, uh, the government did uh, uh, wrong by declaring the state of emergency or the war state. Or yeah, whatever the Emergencies Act. The Emergencies Act. Act. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. invoked that. I think they shouldn't have. If they didn't know better, they should have asked for help. I think eventually they will have to talk. They will have to sit down and negotiate, to talk, and there is no win-win situation in this. Yeah. It's going to be lose-lose. We all lose. We already all lose. Are losing all, every day, right? Okay. But there is no force. Uh, uh, and uh, what this uh, policeman chief did, I think he did right. He is a wise man because it it would take only one. Only man. one. Yeah. yeah. Only yeah. one. One person with a truck can do a lot of damage, Nada. Yeah. They do. I don't uh, agree, but you know, miserable times need miser- miserable measures. And I don't think it's about trucks. I think it's about that one sentence of fringe minority that uh, kind of, uh, you know, Set, that yeah, it's, it, it lit a fuse. It lit a fuse yeah, under people. Not, yeah, you're right. But they have to talk, and they will talk eventually. And Maybe they are talking. Talk, we don't even know it. Nobody yeah. will, will abuse and misuse this situation. I was there uh, uh, one week ago, weekend. It was very cold, and uh, somehow I like I was alone, uh, and I was just. Uh, 
uh, uh, like fixated to the roofs of the buildings uh, surrounding the parliament. You know, and I said, Boy, what you are doing? Why are you doing this? And, I, and then the other me is replying, oh, you are, count, you are trying to find the snipers? You are trying to find, the, is there anybody on the roof? And you know what? There were many. Mm. There were at least four okay. uh, people right. moving on the roofs. Yeah, I yeah. guess they are police. Yeah, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. They shouldn't use the weapon. They should go. Well, then maybe the they're just keeping an eye on things. Look, I have to go. Call back sometime. Pretty crazy, yeah. Sarajevo. Um, that's not the first time I've heard uh, a phrase like that. Seven meals from chaos or whatever. MI5 has f- uh, its um, four meals from anarchy. After people miss four meals, it gets bad. Society starts to break down, collapse. Four meals from anarchy. Helen, I think you're going to be the last call this morning. Oh, the cherry on the Sunday. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, first of all, I blame Trudeau. You're not. You blame surprised. Trudeau. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about slowly? Uh, is he being a scapegoat here, or what do you well, think? Well, in or? a way, I think he is. I think yeah. uh, the way they f- first handled, I think that was good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm. Um, he's. He's partly to blame, and I think, uh, but we didn't have the resources in Ottawa. Now we've got them, okay? Okay. Um, Trudeau, because, first of all, he called in the mandate, and why, when they've been doing going across the border for two years, okay, without being vaccinated, all of a sudden he puts it in in January? Yeah, but they still know? couldn't go across because of the no. American thing, right? The American things, but the American one came after ours, although it was being talked about. And yeah. I do think that probably... Uh, ours came in on the 17th and theirs came in on the 22nd, I think. Yeah, it was okay, I thought like ours that. was on the 15th. Some, whatever, think, yeah, 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 whatever, so yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's like a week so, later. Yeah, 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 they came. But I think they they uh, worked on that, uh, the, liber- the uh, liberals and the, the uh, American government, the Democrats. And so I really do think that Trudeau could have spoken with them. There's such a thing as Zoom call. He could have, they could have done anything. He could have met with them. Instead of his first discussion about it was calling them names, yeah, every rep- reprehensible name, you know. Yeah. So he, he said he sparked the fire, and I'm, I'm very, I feel like that woman from Sarajevo. Uh, I think I'm very nervous about what might happen. Yeah, a lot of us are. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of people you. are. Yeah, I think, yeah, everybody shares your concern and worry and anxiety and can't believe that it's, it's, it's come to this, but here we are, and I would imagine we'll be talking about it tomorrow, too, during the Talk Back Hour, and I welcome your calls. I'm sorry again. Two days in a row we couldn't get to everybody. Just jammed uh, with calls. But we'll do it again tomorrow, and then Friday's the Friday free-for-all. Lots of chances. Rob Snow Show, City News.
number one for local news in Ottawa and the Valley. This is City News, now on 1011 FM and 1310 AM. It's Wednesday, February 16th. Good morning. I'm Andrew Boyle. Right now in Ottawa, minus four degrees. In Smith Falls, it's minus one. Here's what's making news this hour. Ottawa police have begun to hand out warnings in writing, taking another step toward clearing the convoy protest in the downtown, officially serving these notices individually to people lined up along Wellington. Here's City News Parliament Hill reporter Cormac McSweeney. Police are now walking through the protest zone in the capital, handing out one-page print-offs of the notice, which tells the demonstrators they must leave the site immediately or face charges. The notice, which a BuzzFeed reporter has tweeted out, states anyone blocking the streets or assisting those blocking the streets are committing crimes and may be arrested. On his way into caucus, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was asked if he will need to use force. Uh, no, I'm not going to be using force. The decisions made will be by uh, police uh, doing their jobs the right possible way. But for those still hunkered down here, the message is clear. They don't plan on going anywhere. Organizers and demonstrators say they will be holding the line, and one car I passed has a sign in the windshield simply stating, we're not leaving. Police cleared the standoff at the Ambassador Bridge on Sunday, arresting 42 people and seizing 32 vehicles. The remaining convoy participants at the... Uh, Coots border crossing in Alberta were pulled out yesterday after Monday's RCMP raid that resulted in 13 arrests and a weapon seizure. Cormac McSweeney, Parliament Hill. City News Time 1102. Now your forecast with meteorologist Jill Taylor. For Ottawa, the Valley Smith Falls today, the clouds will take charge. A strong gusty wind out of the south. Gusts could exceed 50 kilometers per hour. will climb to plus 5 this evening and then stay near 5 degrees this evening and overnight with that rain moving in after about 9 o'clock tonight. For today, the guaranteed high this evening, plus 5. And right now in Ottawa, minus four degrees, it's minus one in Smith Falls. The head of the Ottawa Police Board says you never want to see anyone leave an organization as Peter Slowly did, the former chief, during the ongoing situation like a trucker protest. Dean says the board did what it could to provide the chief what he asked for to end this peacefully. Mutual agreement to end Slowly's tenure was mutual, so an agreement means a settlement paid to Slowly to terminate that contract will remain private. Dean says the culture inside the police department was not easy and Slowly did receive a lot of pushback to his leadership. He says, uh, or that is one resignation so far. Deans was asked on the Rob Snow Show if she would resign if asked. If somebody wants to use this as a political uh, knife to stab me with, they can. But I do not think under the Act, under the Police Services Act, or my performance, they could point to something that I have done um, that, or, or something I haven't done or something that I've done wrong. So Dean says she will not uh, resign and does say we need more action to end the protest, saying half measures that seem to have been done at some points during the protest just never went to completion. Another drop in the number of people in hospital in Ontario today due to COVID-19, 1,403, but that is down by 147 from just yesterday. ICU patient numbers down by another 20 people. The province, though, is reporting 47 additional COVID-19 deaths. City News Time, 11.04. The cost of living shot up 5.1% last month right across the country. The biggest jump since 1991. In Ottawa, it cost you even more to live than the national average. Inflation rate went up 5.9%. Canada will not be playing for a hockey medal at the Olympics, falling to Sweden in the quarterfinals today. The women's team, though, is going for gold tonight, playing the United States. Speed skater Charles Amelin, one of the country flag bearers to open these games, has become the country's most decorated male winter Olympian. In golden fashion, the 37-year-old, one of four on the team to win the men's 5,000-meter short track relay. I'm Andrew Boyle for News Anytime. Follow up online at ottawa.citynews.ca. The world is changing. So keep up with Rob. The Rob Snow Show returns on Rogers TV and City News. 1011 FM and 1310 AM. It's winter time and the weather is fine. The snow on the woods and field when I reveal my snowmobile. Baby, it'll make you feel like an outdoor meal on a 
snowmobile. Listen to the sound of the belts go round when the winter carnival's here. And oh, what fun at the crack of the gun when the whole gang disappears. The race is on from the bush to the pond and back where the judges feel you've won their seal. For the snowmobile, you've won their seal. For the snowmobile. All right, must be time for Valley View. Reese McIntyre is back, our trusty Valley correspondent. He's with the Eganville Leader, which is uh, out every Wednesday, so it's out today. Independently owned since 1902, it is Renfrew County's largest paid circulation newspaper. Out of Eganville, good morning. Good morning, Rob, and today is a very special issue on our Eganville Leader. Uh, it is our baby section. So the babies of 2021. So if you want okay. the most colorful, beautiful babies, go to page page 11. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and and this is an annual thing that you do? Yes. Uh, the babies really? of 2020. Yeah, 2021. And you know, maybe for grandparents, they want to show off the little babies, and they send the little photos in. And we have actually two full pages of uh, babies this year. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a, the, the the must be the stork the Megan doll were busy last year. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, a, well, a long time under lockdown, right? And you know, do that, yeah. And again, you know, um, you know, last week we talked, you know, Pembroke being so sexy and whatnot. So there you <laughs> go, right? Anyway, um, what's the big story? What's the big story? Well, uh, aside from COVID, we tried to see, we, we actually devoted a section of uh, page to our uh, letter writers. Um, pro and con against the uh, convoy and especially some people were really angry that our counselors and Mercer Valley Council endorsed the truckers and uh, oh, really? Really rubbed, okay. that really rubbed a lot of people the wrong way uh, not as much support they show support for them not formally endorse them but they showed support for the, for the truckers and as I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago one of the counselors uh, Tim Shison he drives a truck for a living family generational business and he was down there with kids and he has no qualms being there and he's happy he went and made his message he's not one of the ones that's stuck around mill for three weeks uh, i'll give them that but yeah people are divided some are very supportive and some are very angry more so at the council for publicly stating their support for the movement so interesting, interesting to see what happens in november when the, when the election comes or oh october, i see november. yeah yeah of course yeah. of course yeah okay uh and cheryl galan i don't know if you saw this uh she she's making news um the no. mp from <laughs> renfrew county do you know about this no the, uh, Dave and i were talking off air. yeah I, okay I, uh, she issued a statement that says, I am calling on all Canadians who disagree with Trudeau's mandates to peacefully demonstrate on the lawns of Parliament Hill, our provincial legislatures and city halls. But this is this is an interesting twist. Park your vehicles in parking lots to fit more people in front of the buildings. The vulgar signs distract from the main message. So don't bring them. Grab your Canadian flag and demonstrate all day. Go home each night. And peacefully demonstrate again the next day and every day after until Trudeau listens to Canadians and lifts the federal mandates and restrictions. God bless Canada. Okay. So, anyway, that's uh, the MP from Renfrew County. It's, uh, you know, what she peaceful knows, protest. She put, peaceful protest. Right? She also put the word Trudeau in there three or four times. <laughs> and as, as, as I mentioned yeah. before, Rob, Trudeau is a bad word up in this part of the valley. He, yeah. he is, he's not hated. He is loathed. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's it's it just it's, you put that word in, bang, that triggers them. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you came from that, but uh, we've had no. I'm not sure why you want to demonstrate against the federal government on the lawns, provincial legislature, or your local legislature. I'm not sure how that's a federal issue, but hey, that's just me. Okay. Well, some <laughs> people think it's you know they're that the protesters are protesting against the wrong level of government since many of the health restrictions are provincial health restrictions yeah. anyway, right? So. Anyway. There you go. Well, luckily it's always in the Well, back. I mean, here we go. I mean, it's like tomorrow will be 21 days of this first, <laughs> right? 21 days. Okay, let's um I I want give give a shout out to um now retired OPP Sergeant Jerry Novak. I know you know him. I know him quite well. Jerry is he's one of these guys a hard to bull. He I think he spent more time working with the downtrodden, the mentally ill disenfranchised children than he did actually be an OPP officer. He did so many projects. I, I can't, I was going back to think of what he's done. He established the grind in Pembroke, which is a drop-in center, coffee shop, soup kitchen. He established the first homeless shelter. Well, not he, but he spearheaded the first homeless shelter in Renfrew County. We only had one. Mm. He runs an annual camp out at uh, Camp Smitty for native children. 
um, to kind of, you know, self-confidence have a boosting thing that they can do things. I just, that's just the top of the list that comes to mind. And on top of that, he's a sergeant doing his OPP duties during the day. So he just recently retired and I uh, wish him well. And he will not slow down this guy. If there's a project, if he sees something that needs to be addressed, he'll do it. He has, uh, especially during COVID, he was able to, you know, he was going around to the restaurants himself, picking up the extra food that they were going to throw out, bring it back and just and cook it up for the homeless people. And just, just an incredible guy. If you met him, you would never know he's a police officer. You would never really? know that. Yeah. And uh, he's a, done a great career. And I wish him well. Now I think about Renfrew County, I'd, homelessness doesn't come to mind. It's the hidden. It's called couch surfing up here. Couch surfing, uh, eh? Okay. The, okay. the old days, what they used to do when you came in, if you were homeless, they give you a bus ticket off. You go to Ottawa or Toronto. You're not our problem. Wash their hands. Oh, off. really? Okay. Yeah, they, the old days. I'd say the last ten years has been a real move by the United Way and other agencies. Listen, these are our kids. We don't want them going to live on the streets of Ottawa. That's where you get Operation Go Home comes from. They want to send them home. Right. And so Jerry recognized this, and he set up a homeless shelter, and it was uh, established in the Grind Restaurant. Unfortunately, it had to close last year due to lack of funding. They were Strictly, they wanted to keep the government money out of it. They wanted it strictly uh, a local issue, local businesses, sponsorship, and just didn't keep it going. They had four rooms in the uh, homeless shelter, so it's too bad. But uh, there is no homeless shelter now in Renfrew County. There is no homeless shelter in Renfrew no, County. No, there is not. Not officially. So not people officially. Couch surf. Okay. Couch surf, yeah. Wow. And it, it ties into the real estate market, the lack of affordable housing. Well, yeah, the now, now, I mean... Um, because housing has become so unaffordable in the city, so many people are moving to the valley. It was one of the big stories of, of 2021, right, was yeah. the boom in the real estate. And I'm sure that's affected even just trying to find an apartment in rent for right? Oh, it certainly has. I was talking to a realtor on Monday, and she's the president of the local real estate board. She said she's been there since 1990. Never she's seen anything like this. None of us have, but she said back then, if you sold a million dollar home, it was like a rarity. Like all the oh, realtors yeah. would call each other. Now it's common, and oh, sure. the minimum oh. price for a waterfront home is seven hundred thousand dollars to start. If you can find a waterfront. Oh yeah, home. yeah, 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 sure. But I'm wondering about, um, you know, what if you needed a bachelor apartment or or a one bedroom <laughs> apartment? I mean, are they do, are there even any available? You know, what's what's the supply like, for example? The supply is limited, and usually it's not the best units available it's, yeah uh, you know it's not not the most quality like they are building and, new units but they're you know the, like top of the line rents like two grand and up you know yeah, I, but, yeah. Like, for example lapine has come in and they filled the market for all the baby boomers that want to come back home to rent fruit but there was nothing to come home to as far as a, a, a similar type of lifestyle but now lapine has caught that market and they putting up uh, 350 apartments in rent fruit and oh, the first building sold out already and the second one i believe is close to 50 percent occupancy so you know they, right, they, caught, right. they caught the market but it doesn't help someone who can't afford that so you have some health care news as well this week uh Oh, for our, yes, um, our VTAC program, for your listeners, uh, 25,000 people, we call them orphans up here in the county, don't have a family doctor. Our population is just over 100,000, so 25% don't have access. So what they've done, oh. uh, my, uh, they got the health agency together, set up a virtual access uh, triage center. And what they do is they triage you up virtually, and they receive about 1,600 calls a week um, just to access these services. And during COVID, they also developed out of COVID. They were doing all the COVID uh, screenings. They were doing the, uh, the in-home visits. So it's really, we, the funding was extended for one more year, and it's just one of the things you hope to maintain it's sustainable because we it's always uphill battle to recruit doctors in a rural environment and when they do they, they latch onto them and their 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 patient list fills up very quickly so we have the funding for another year and hopefully they can make it a long-term project so it helps like i say 1,600 phone calls a week to access this system all right so that's pretty wild you know in the valley they love their catch the ace we love to follow <laughs> the catch the ace so there is a catch the ace in barry's bay right now yeah. Barry's Bay catch the aces up to week sixteen. Yeah, week that's sixteen. Good. So that's you know it's getting up there. So if you that's a lot if, for if, if they the draw trail. you if they draw your your number, and you uh, you they estimate that the prize will be nine hundred bucks. It says and the total jackpot would be about seventeen grand. It varies. Well, I agree and it's not a million dollars, but it's seventeen grand. You know so. Oh my, that would be half a car. You would take that, Bruce. You would take I that. I would not turn you, it down. You'd take that and retire. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so look, the uh, Eganville leader's up for some awards. 
Yes, uh, the, the the announcement was made uh, this week, and went for six provincial awards for the for Community you. Newspaper Association. And the awards will be again this year will be virtual, but isn't quite the same. But it, nevertheless, and the draws will be made in April. And different categories. I'm finally I'm so happy my colleague Terry Furry. He's our undisputed sports section guy of, of the Valley of View. It's come down to the point, Rob, that most sport, most newspapers don't even carry any sports anymore. Like, you know, uh, the kids' hockey games. And that, we make it a point. And Terry has pours his heart and soul into it to keep that sports section going. And he was finally recognized he's up for a best sports section. And uh, for a lot of people, it doesn't mean a lot. But if you're a kid, you see your name in the newspaper, wow, I got a goal or assist. It means a lot to them. So uh, after that, and Gerald, my boss, the editor, has a great photo. That is up for award. It is a firefighting photo. I know, shocking, fire in, in the valley. But he was right behind the uh, two firemen. And uh, it's a great photo. It's an action shot from what a, a firefighter's perspective of trying to deal with a burning house. So we'll find out in April okay. how it goes. All right. Good luck. Well, I hope not. We can do our best. All, right. all we can do. We'll so. talk, we talk next week. You bet you're It's Robin. a date. Enjoy the week. All right. Take care. From the Eganville leader, our valley correspondent, Bruce McIntyre. Uh, Back on to the story of the now former Ottawa Police Chief, Peter Slowly. We will be joined by the former chair of the Ottawa Police Services Board, Councillor Eli L. Shantiri, represents uh, West Carleton March Ward. He's going to join me coming up next. Rob Snow Show, City News. When you've lost your breasts, you've sort of lost part of yourself. And then all at once, you're losing your hair. You don't know who you are anymore. You want to feel like yourself again. So I think that the store, a mastectomy store, is essential because you've lost your identity. And then all at once, you're looking for a wig, you need a headscarf, you need a camisole. There's nowhere to go. There's no one to talk to. This should be essential because there are more and more women that are getting breast cancer. I think it's one in six. They're becoming younger. I have a client that's 18 years old. And where do they go? They need a place like this that the women that work there understand. They know what you're going through. It's changed quite a bit. Our hours are different. We're now open and from 10 to 5 we're not as busy as we were a lot of women are afraid to go out uh, they're afraid that maybe there are more people in the store so that's why I try and let them know you are alone there's absolutely nobody in the store except you and I if there is a woman that she's very afraid I will lock the door to make sure nobody else comes in I'll put a sign back in 10 15 minutes just to give her that reassurance Um, before we would have four five six people in the store we didn't have to turn anybody away now we do some clients do leave and they're upset because they're in the store. They said, you know, we drove 20 minutes and now we're not allowed in the store. And I try to make them understand that there's somebody in here that's going through chemo or radiation. So that's sort of changed a lot that we're not able to have more people in the store. If we're talking about products, there's the bras that are adapted for mastectomy. Uh, the bathing suits that are adapted to mastectomy. We have special camisoles as well and uh, post-surgery bras. And then we have for women going through chemo, the wigs uh, that we have a big selection uh, in the store as well. We have scarves. Some women don't feel comfortable wearing a wig. They prefer to wear a scarf or a hat. So we have a huge uh, selection of that as well. We offer uh, compression garments as well. When you're going through a mastectomy, you might have lymphedema in your arms uh, after um, a couple of years. And uh, you have flare-ups. So we have the sleeves, uh, the, the, the hand as well that can be covered. We show each other our scar. We talk about the treatments, how we felt. Um, and I guess that's what they're looking for here. That, that's what makes us special. We have an added value in this store. Besides everything that's in the store, that's a product that's, that's, that can handle any problem that a client might have. Me and Linda, we've been through. We know how it feels in our bodies. The Rob Snow Show returns on Rogers TV and City News, 101.1 FM and 1310 AM. Councillor Eli Elshantiri joins me, represents West Carlton March Ward, former 
Chair of the Ottawa Police Services Board, joining me to talk about everything that happened yesterday with the resignation of the Chief of Police, uh, Eli. Good morning, Eli. Nice to hear from you. Good morning, Rob. Yeah, I hope you're well these days. Uh, What's your reaction to the resignation of Chief Slowly? Well, I think uh, I know you make a reference to the article in the paper, and, and honestly, that's how I felt. So, And you know me through the years, I always speak what's in my heart. And it's not necessarily sometimes it's uh, well received, but, you know, it has to be said. So Peter, you know, chief slowly, or our former chief, was hand out dry, to, to be honest with you, but not just by one group. Or, I mean, the whole concept of... Uh, uh, of the protester or the convoy or the the sea, whatever you want to call it, is uh, it, it could have been handled. But it's not time for now to say how it should have been handled. Or what I would say, we need to support whoever the chief is. Now we have acting chief. We also need to support him as a city, as a board, as a resident. How could they do their job if we don't stand by them and support them? And as, as you, I said in the article, calling a meeting in the middle of Saturday afternoon when, when the, the command should be involved with 10,000 demonstrations on, on the Parliament Hill, that's not help, help to the chief or his, uh, or his command uh, team. That he shouldn't be on a Zoom call with counselors. He, he, exactly. You're right, it, it, especially during this should time. be calling the shots downtown Ottawa, right? Okay. Uh, I know I know one of your colleagues, he, he used to call me every day when we had the Tamil demonstration in 2009. Yeah. And I used to go for a drive with the acting chief at the time, Gilles LaRochelle, and get brief from Chief Vern White and yeah. Gilles LaRochelle, hey, this is what's happening, this is what we're doing, this is what we need from you as, as uh, our board chair, and go to your board, tell them what's happening, go to your mayor, tell the city what's happening. And we used to bring that honest information every day they were here for 23 days we didn't have one emergency meeting during that time and we were not shortage on information we were well informed well aware of what's happening and i know some people say well it was a different yeah maybe it is every demonstration is different but the time of the block 401 the lifeline of of Canada. No, uh, well, I remember that demonstration. I remember it quite well, and they they caused a lot of disruption to traffic in the core, uh, you know, especially along Albert and Slater, were basically taken over, Mm -hmm. and uh, it caused all kinds of problems for OC Transpo. I mean, we didn't have light rail in those days, so uh, it basically wreaked havoc with the bus service uh, back then. I asked Vern White about that at the time, why the police weren't taking a more, say, heavy-handed approach to get them off of the streets and back onto the lawn of Parliament Hill. Uh, and he said be- because if if he did, there would be 100,000 more Tamil protesters here within 24 to 48 hours in Ottawa. It would only, inf- In other words, it would only inflame the situation, which... Um, I think a lot of people are worried about that happening here now, right, Eli? So. Yes, uh, and, and it, it, look, I'm, I'm sure this uh, convoy is going to be studied by people for many years to come. What happened, who was behind it, why it's so different, uh, why it was funded uh, over 50% of it from outside Canada. Yeah. You know, there's so many questions, to be honest with you. I don't think it's now the time to... All what we're looking for now is a peaceful resolution to this as much as possible. If that peaceful resolution, you know, from the first week, the mayor, or maybe second week, the mayor called for a special meeting, and we recommend the federal government appointing uh, a respectful Canadian who can be, uh, you know, a mediator between the two parties, between the convoy, between the government of Canada, and, uh, and, and to this day, that's, I'm not sure if it's happening or not, but it should happen. Yeah. Somebody what do you say? What? need to speak yeah. to those people. doesn't matter whether we agree with their tactic, whether we don't agree with their tactic, but we need to communicate. We need to have a communication. This convoy is different than any demonstration we saw before. It caused the Conservatives their leadership. Yeah. It's not... It's well, not and good. now it's, co- it's cost the Ottawa police its leader as well. Exactly. But you say he was... The chief was hung out to dry. Who hung yeah. him out to dry? I mean... There's enough 
blamed for all, to touch all of us, to be fair with you. Because one counselor email in hand, I want a police officer at every corner, every... And I, know, I understand the frustration, uh, some of my colleagues. I understand the residents' frustration about, uh, about uh, uh, what's happening in their neighborhood, in their building. But Rob, l- let's put it in perspective. I don't want to talk too much about operational, but we have a limited resource in Ottawa. Believe me, it is limited. I know everybody will tell you, oh, we have 1,200 police officers. Well, 1,200, so that's for three shifts. So you do the calculation, and there's, they have to cover the whole city. We still have gangs. We still have robberies. We still have domestic. We still have a lot of things. So there's a limit amount of resources you have. The chief has been asking for resources from day one almost. So, but then the, the demand and, and, and what really hurt so much is to go publicly. Like nobody would send, you know, before they send email to the chief, they, they go on Twitter, say, oh, this building, need, we, need, we need police in it, that corner, we need this grocery store. We got it. We got it. Like you, we need, but we don't have. Why, why making all this pressure on, 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 on one person? And why counselor has to tell them what to do? And where is the, you know, also the board leaving the, the, the upper, you know, get in, you know, have uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, a statement or, or a report from uh, on a daily basis. Nobody's saying you shouldn't have to do this, but meet among yourself as a board. You don't have to include the chief and his command on no, those okay. meetings. You don't have a public meeting and, and trash the, the chief like they did on that Saturday afternoon, three and a half hours. He's on a hot seat, just like if he's leading that convoy instead of his leading that the, that the political side of it is getting in the way was getting in the way of the operational Thank side you. of it is that what you're saying you said it nicely i guess then i okay I all right to... okay all right eli good to get caught up i'm, I'm glad to hear you're thank well it's been a long time really i hope so. you'll have on the sh- have you on the show sometime thank soon you. again thank you bye-bye uh west carlton march ward longtime city councillor uh for the far west end there and uh the former chair of the uh, police services board defending the former Ottawa police chief saying he was hung out to dry by politicians who wasted a lot of time when the police should have been policing. That's Eli L. Shantiri. Rob Snow, Show, City News. in Ottawa and the Valley. This is City News, now on 1011 FM and 1310 AM. 
it's Wednesday, February 16th. Good morning, I'm Danielle Bain. Right now in Ottawa, it's minus four, and in Smith's Falls, plus one. Here's what's making news this hour. We are 20 days into the convoy protests in Ottawa, and police are now handing out notices to demonstrators telling them to leave now or face charges. Police are in the process of handing these flyers out to those still in the protest zone or placing them on windshields of vehicles still parked in the core of the capital. The notice also tells protesters that anyone blocking the streets or assisting those blocking the streets may be arrested. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says he does not plan to use force and decisions on clearing the protest will be made by police. There's been another drop in the number of people in hospital in Ontario today due to COVID-19. The total is down by 147 from yesterday to 1,403. ICU patients are down as well by 20 to 364. The province is reporting 47 additional COVID-19 deaths. There were 2,532 new cases reported today with 184 in Ottawa, 55 in Leeds, Grenville, Lanark, 34 in Eastern Ontario and 11 in Renfrew County. And the Canadian men's hockey team came up short in the quarterfinals in Beijing. Canada was eliminated by Sweden after a 2-0 loss. Both Canada and the United States were eliminated in the quarterfinals. The outcome was completely opposite on the women's side though, where Team Canada is going for gold tonight as they face their longtime rivals, the United States. City News Time, 1132. I'm Danielle Bain, and for news anytime, follow up online at ottawa.citynews.ca. He's a pillar of community opinion. The Rob Snow Show returns on Rogers TV and City News. 1011 FM and 1310 AM. Well, new record highs for the price of gasoline again this morning. I saw $1.60. Never, never saw that before in Ottawa. $1.60. Dollar sixty. Oh, it's painful. Uh, One sixty point nine seemed to be a common price in Ottawa. It doesn't seem like that long ago we crossed the dollar fifty uh, threshold. But the inflation number, the consumer price index, released this morning by Statistics Canada. It's a January number, and it's five point one percent. And that marks the first time that the inflation rate has been above. 5% since September of 1991. September of 1991. 1991, it was a heck of a year. Uh, Philip Cross is back with us. He is a senior fellow at the McDonald Laurier Institute and a former chief economic analyst at Statistics Canada. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. Well, that's a hot number, isn't it? Yeah, it, uh, I think it puts to bed any idea that, uh, you know, inflation was going to be short term or was going to be easily wrestled to the ground. This this was accelerating. It's becoming more widespread, more embedded. So uh, the Bank of Canada is really going to have its work cut out for it to, to bring this back under control. Okay. Now... You have suggested in the past that it's not, maybe even this number, uh, as strong as it is at 5.1%, is not a true reflection of uh, the actual increase in the cost of living. Uh, do you still feel yeah. that way? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. some shortfalls in, in the way consumer prices are measured. Uh, notably, uh, Statistics Canada doesn't survey used car prices, which... Uh, uh, certainly in the U.S. we know are, are rising very sharply. Of course, we don't know exactly what's happening in Canada because we don't have data on it. But it's likely that, that that would have added to inflationary pressures as well. And there's the whole problem of shortages. Uh, you know, if you, uh, if you buy a car, you're going to wait weeks. If you want a car that's a hybrid or an electric vehicle, you're going to wait months or years. So uh, all these are costs to consumers that aren't measured in the CPI. But... I think it's, you know, clearly the data is pointing, pointing unequivocally to the fact that inflation is accelerating, and I think that's what really matters here. Okay. When Statistics Canada says shelter costs were up, and in, and in this case, biggest jump since February of 1990, shelter costs up 6.2% year over year, biggest jump since February of 90, 1990. What is included? What kinds of things are included in this thing called shelter? Yeah, well, Sisica has a has a, a very hard under, to understand methodology for measuring the the cost of shelter. 
the big one is housing. <clears throat> you know, rents are pretty straightforward to measure, but the cost of housing itself is difficult. What Citizen Canada does is basically it says that it treats people, homeowners, as renting from themselves, which is kind of a bizarre concept, but they don't want the, the CPI to be influenced by whether people are moving back and forth between homeowning and renting. Um, but there's also the cost. The cost of shelter also includes uh, the cost of running a home, uh, heating and you know utilities, utilities and, uh, okay. property yeah. taxes and all these fun things. So uh, a lot of things go into the cost of shelter. And mortgage, the cost of carrying the mortgage, right? Mortgage insurance, mortgage interest, right? So it's, it's interest rate sensitive as well, right? Very but, much so. And that's... Yeah. That's one thing that's been keeping a cap in that, but it's quite notable this month that uh, the cost of shelter was up 6.2% year over year, even with lower mortgage costs. So uh, that sharp increase in home prices that we've seen over the last year is is feeding through into the index. And, uh, you know, that, that's a really important point to make because uh, you, you can't sit back and say, well, we're importing this, or this is, you know, global events. What happens in the housing market in Canada is completely under our own control. Uh, we have stimulated demand way beyond whatever the supply of housing uh, could meet. The result is an explosive increase in prices, um, and it, it's up to authorities in this country to, to bring that under yeah, yeah. control. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, there's a supply-demand imbalance there, yeah. Because the the um, interest rate environment has been so attractive, right? At the same time, um, big immigration number last year, like four hundred thousand um, uh, on the immigration side. But it makes me wonder: you have the you have had this incredible run in real estate prices, uh, you know, upwards of eight hundred thousand dollars, and yet the mortgage interest costs have been one of the things that's been kind of keeping the over the overall shelter component of the CPI down and by down you know 6.2 percent but so many are predicting higher interest rates now so what's going to happen to the shelter component of the consumer price index could go up even more maybe it'll go up more although that's uh it kind of uses a, a long-term moving average, so the the mortgage interest cost moves very mm. slowly and, and you know doesn't have dramatic month-to-month -month changes the way the housing prices themselves do. Um, but yeah, you know we we have caught some breaks over the last year. Inflation could have been a lot higher if mortgage rates hadn't fallen over the last year. If we hadn't had a really good crop last year. And there's no guarantee we're going to have a really good crop next year. In fact, there's a, a lot of reason to think uh, there's going to be further upward pressure in food prices, particularly because of the uh, the poor crop in the, in the Western Canada. Farmers uh, liquidated a lot of their livestock, and that's going to restrain meat prices going forward. And meat prices are clearly the number one upward pressure on food prices, which we haven't talked about, but, you know, that's... You know, the things that are most visible to consumers are the price of gasoline, the price of food, and the, the price of housing. And we're seeing large upward pressure in all three of those components. Yep. Shelter, 6.2% year-over-year gain. Food, up 6.5%. Margarine, my gosh. Margarine, up 16.5%. Um, <clears throat> and gas up 31 percent so very very visible and uh, bound to cause more political trouble uh one would think the the situation with the blockades ambassador bridge looks like the the uh, well the rcmp is just saying now that uh the rcmp's broken an agreement to get the the emerson protesters out the situation in coots has been largely been settled now Mm -hmm. Could 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 those the 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 um, the trade impacts of those blockades have an inflationary effect? What do you think? Oh, I really do. I don't think firms think so. set prices based on the fact that there's been you know a disruption of one or two weeks in supplies. If it had persisted for one or two months, firms might have reevaluated. But changing prices is costly for firms. They don't do this unless they think they're going to keep that new price for some time. Uh, you know, grocery prices are obviously one 
exception to that. But, uh, you know, the vast majority of things that people buy, you know, is cell phones and TVs and cars and all that. Uh, prices are set way in advance, and uh, they don't fluctuate much in, due to short-term disruptions like that. Okay. How surprised are you that the Bank of Canada has not raised interest rates yet? I was surprised. I had thought they would have increased it by now, partly because markets were expecting it. But, you know, it wasn't a total shock that they didn't. You know, the bank is, is very careful to communicate to markets ahead of time what they're going to do. And they hadn't communicated this ahead of time. So that's consistent with this philosophy of, of not surprising markets. Uh, the problem with this approach is that markets continually, and the Bank of Canada both continually are surprised with how um, strong inflation is. So, um, you know, you may not be uh, surprised by interest rates, but you are being surprised by price increases. And price increases are going to lead to interest rate hikes. So I, I don't completely, uh, I certainly don't agree with the bank's reluctance to increase rates. But I think to the degree that they they fall behind the curve now, that just means they're going to have to increase more later in the year into 2023. Okay. Philip Cross, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for yeah, having me on. Former chief economic analyst for StatScan and senior fellow at the McDonnell Laurier Institute, Philip Cross, on the inflation rate above uh, 5% for the first time since 91. We'll be back. Uh, we'll talk about some of the big city issues with uh, my good friend, the managing editor at the Your Community Voice newspapers, Patty Guccione. This is City News. It started out with a small outdoor booth in what was called Artist Alley, which is actually the area just outside our store on William Street, uh, where for a couple of years we sold uh, our jewelry uh, directly on the street and then we slowly evolved to having an indoor uh, location in this building 55 Barwood Market Square we then moved to another location in Place de Ville and then moved back down here on Dalhousie Street at Ear Gear in the 90s and then back into this building again in uh, in 2000 as a collection I do a collection of jewelry called Cirque that's uh, mainly uh, beaded work with a combination of semi-precious and uh, vintage beads. And then she does a hat collection uh, called Fanfreluche, that's all cut and sewn hats in a variety of fabrics and for uh, all of the seasons of the year. We've curated and sourced the artisans that we represent in a lot of different ways over the years since it's been, you know, uh, since 1985. Uh, some people come to us since we're known and uh, other artisans that we represent might uh, recommend that they come and see us. Uh, some people we find at craft shows or we see uh, their work, somebody wears it in and we go and track it down and bring it. And then some people interestingly are with us in one medium and then sometimes they evolve to another. They're all Canadian and mainly local. Um, with the roughly 50 people that we have, I'd say more than half of those are Ottawa Gatineau and then the rest are from other uh, cities in Canada, Montreal, Toronto, um, Vancouver, etc. If you can afford it, go to a small business and spend some money. It's lovely when you come in and, you know, give me a pep talk and tell me how much you love this place and you've been coming here for years. But if you can afford it, please spend some money too, because all the pep talks in the world are not going to pay my rent which is still full rent even when we're closed. Then secondly, if you can't afford to spend money, follow the businesses that you want to support on social media. Go to their Instagram, go to their Facebook, follow their Twitter, and then retweet. Uh, share their Facebook page, like and comment, because if you can't afford to, as many of us can't right now, to do extra expenditures, Doing all of those little things like that will raise the visibility of those small businesses and hopefully for them result in some online or curbside or other uh, business for them.
The Rob Snow Show returns on Rogers TV and City News. 101.1 FM and 1310 AM. So there's a live news event happening right now. Um, this is Winnipeg. But it's interesting here. Um, this is Sergeant Paul Maneg. Here we are. Maybe Maniger. But nevertheless, they're talking about the um, ending the blockade in Emerson, Manitoba, the border crossing there. Yeah, absolutely. That was part of the dialogue and the communication back and forth. Uh, they wanted to get their message across, which I believe they have. And we wanted to make sure they understood kind of where we were coming. At some point, like I say, our enforcement might have been needed. But like they say, the machines are running, they're warming up, and in a short time, they'll be on their way. Give you an extra, you know, no vehicles told, no charges laid, uh, the RCMP has said so far. We're being brought up, but like they say, we kind of kept, we had all the equipment, all the personnel needed. We kept going the way we were doing it, and it's worked for us today, and like they say, it's resolved perfectly. How confident are you that this is the end of the blockade in Emerson, and we may not see it pop up again in a week or two? Well, that's, there's always situations that could develop. Right now, we'll focus on today. Um, we'll learn from what we had. We, Obviously, have a good dialogue with everyone that's been here, and like I say, well, we're hoping that, like I say, as of today, this will be open. Now, with the uh, blockade ended, is there any concerns about additional slow rolls possibly causing issues along 75 like there was uh, previously this month? Well, we're not aware of anything at this moment, but like I say, we'll kind of continue with what we're doing. If something develops, we'll communicate and we'll go from there. Why were there no right, arrests let's leave that. today? Let's leave that. that. Let's leave that as a uh, turn to French. Nobody arrested, no vehicles towed, and there will be a conclusion to the uh, blockade in Emerson. That was a news conference. It was held outside, and uh, I just looked it up. It's minus 14 in Emerson right now. Yeah, cold day there. Cold day. Uh, let's welcome Pat Aguccione. He is the managing editor of the Ottawa Community Voice Newspapers. Pat, welcome back, Pat. City Good Hall. morning. Yeah, a lot, lot happening, of course. Um, yeah. Your reaction, please, to the stunning news yesterday of the resignation of Peter Slowly. Well, like a lot of other people have, have said, and it, I think it had to happen. I, I, I thought it might happen at the sort of end of this, whenever that, whenever that is. But you know, some of the analogies that other people have used uh, when it's you know when you're not performing it on the field, you usually fire the coach or the GM. So. I think there was speaking to a lot of counselors. They were literally getting hundreds and hundreds of phone calls and and emails. Uh, you know, you know, expressing their frustration with what they were watching on TV and and reading in the media. So I, I think it had to happen. The Billings Bridge thing. How big a factor do you think that was? I think that I was. Think that was the, I, in the end, I think you know what people saw on the Saturday night with the hot tubs and that and, and the concerts at Rideau and Sussex, and then you know a community, you know, the community having to to put their own blockade up. I think that was the catalyst in the end. I, I, I do. Okay. Um, I just had Eli El Shantiri on here. He's um, always been very pro-police. You would agree, right? I'm sure yes, form, former yeah. um, head of the Ottawa Police Services Board. He had yeah. that position before. Diane Deans had that position. That's right. Um, he says that he was hung out to dry. Chief Slowly was hung out to dry. What do you, what do you think about that? I, I I don't I don't know if if everyone would agree with that, but I I think you, you, you know you saw some of the different leadership, you know how Eli ran the police services board and and how uh, how Diane Dean's doing it. I mean, it 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 just felt um, when you were watching some of these uh, you know live police services board meeting that. You know, Diane was more of an observer as, as to what was going on and didn't sort of, you know, take the bull by the horn. And I, and I know that, you know, you're not supposed to direct the police, but I think what the public was looking for was some kind of leadership, somebody, you know, to, you know, to map out some kind of game plan and they didn't see it. And I, and, and I think, you know, what, what Eli is saying is that the chief was hung out to dry. I think a lot of it had to do with these out in the open police services board meeting where they were being asked for a, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? What, what's the plan? What's the plan? Well, that, you know, 
a live Zoom meeting uh, is, is probably not the place to have that. Yeah, Eli was uh, clearly very frustrated about that, that, um, that these meetings, he thinks, took away from the time that could have been better spent working on kind of the operational or tactical stuff that was actually and, 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 and happening. And that's what I thought, because right? these yeah. meetings went on for hours. Like hours. You, them, you know, why, you, you know. You're mad that you, the chief isn't doing something, but you haul him into a meeting on a Saturday afternoon for three hours. You know, right. So. And to think that the chief wasn't doing anything, uh, I, I think, is, 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 is a bit of a stretch as well. Obviously, what he was doing wasn't working in the eyes of the public. And I think when the public lost confidence in him, there was no way to turn back. So, I was, you know, I don't think anybody should have been surprised at what happened yesterday. But, you know, maybe the timing of it um, yeah. surprised me. But, yeah. Well, I thought it would be, and I'd like to know what you think. I didn't think it was going to happen yesterday, and I actually called you yesterday, and we were both like, holy smokes. Um, (laughs) I thought it would be a more graceful exit, I guess. I was thinking, this is how I thought things would go down. A couple of months from now, when all of this is hopefully over, and uh, the warm weather is here and everything, you know, life is slowly returning to normal. Uh, there would be a statement someday and it would talk about uh, how we got through the pandemic and the, how difficult the protests were, but they were peacefully concluded and how we came through it together. And, you know, it'd be like syrupy and soft. And it would announce that Chief Slowly has decided to pursue other opportunities or spend more time with his family or right. <laughs> something and, and like I, that, right? Like, and, and allow I, the guy to save face, I guess, but yeah. it just didn't go down like that. So Yeah, and, and I think the story will eventually come out as to what, actually what happened yesterday. I don't think we've we've got all the all, the whole story yet on, on how that came down yesterday, um, whether it was his decision or he was or he was pushed out. But yeah, I, 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 I was thinking exactly what you, you said that you know, when this was over, uh, you know, uh, we we would get we would get some kind of announcement that he was uh, stepping aside for whatever personal reasons or that to to let him leave gracefully. But you know, the the way it happened yesterday, um, I don't think anybody could have predicted. Okay. So um, let's talk about Councillor Deans. Uh, I interviewed Councillor Deans this morning. She is the chair of the police services board. That's a big job. Um, It's, you know, it's the chair of the police services board. Um, The the board hires and monitors the performance of the chief, and she's the chair of that board. How much of this is on her? What do you think, Pat? Well, I mean... I, I, I've said on your show before, she's been in, in a bit of a, you know, between a rock and a hard place, but at the same time, she is the chair of the board. And you, you do look for the chair of any committee, any board for leadership. And I think I think uh, anybody could argue that there was a lack of leadership during this whole occupation. Um, and I, I think it would have been very differently, handled very differently if it had been an Eli L. Shantiri or you know, even a Jan Harder. Those kinds of personalities, I think, would have handled this very differently. Um, whether you know, no, they don't. They don't direct operation, but they can certainly set the tone. I think um, if that has to be behind the scenes, fine. But that was the frustration with everybody, you know, that was watching this from afar or, or living it downtown. That mm. they were looking for someone to lead. And in, in, in a case like this, you would think that the the, the chair of the, of the police services board would have been one of those that would have set the tone. Uh, and it didn't. It didn't happen. Um, in my opinion, Diane looked like a bit of an observer at some of these, at, at what we saw in the open, and that's all we could see because we weren't in the in-cameras, obviously. We weren't in the briefings behind the scenes. But I think in the end, uh, you know, that'll be the uh, synopsis of what, of what they thought of the leadership from the police services board chair in the end. Okay. <laughs> or, well, let, let, let's just a little bit from my interview with Councillor Deans this morning. Uh, I've been very, I've been working very hard. If somebody wants to use this as a political uh, knife to stab me with, they can. But I do not think under the Act, under the Police Services Act, or my performance, they could point to something that I have done, um, that or, or something I haven't done, or something that I've done wrong. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's from this morning because. She- and I, you I know, there's a political. There's, there's a, I'm sorry, Pat. There's, you know, there are politics here. Like she's running for mayor. Yeah. 
um, and she's up against a counselor in Catherine McKenney, who's been really at the forefront, um, mm-hmm. you know, very prominent as um, someone said, you know, help us, help us, help us. We need to get a handle on this situation here. Right. And, and, and the other mayoral candidate called for, a, you know, an injunction, for an injunction three three early this, on yeah, into this, three, right? Three days into this. And, and we're just getting one uh, in the last couple of days, which is uh, way too late. Uh, and. You know, and I think everybody would agree uh, that the injunction the city got was way too late. I mean, and, and Bob Shirley wasn't the only one calling for it. Former Chief uh, Vernon White was calling for it. David Pratt, former defense minister. Um, Alan Rock, who I believe lives right downtown, uh, used to see him walking to his job at Ottawa U every day. He lives right downtown. He was calling for an injunction early on in this process. So there's some pretty experienced politicians that were calling for this. And for whatever reason, the city seemed to be dragging their heels on this and called it way too late in the process. Yeah, yeah. I just wonder if the if the events of the last three weeks have really damaged Diane Dean's chances to be mayor. Where she may have been considered a front runner, maybe you can't really say that anymore. What do you think, Pat? Simon? Look, if 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 you talk to any counselor, if you if you read social media and uh, you know your DMs and your emails, I think people would say that there was a lack of leadership from the police services board chair throughout this process. And so whether that's fair or not, that's the, that's, that's what the perception. people are thinking. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think, uh, I think I know something about politics. This will certainly damage her chances of, of when she, you know, when she starts, you know, starts a campaign if she does in, on May 2nd. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Yep. The managing editor of the Your Community Voice newspapers, Pat Guccione, back tomorrow, 9 o'clock. We'll see what the day brings. The Rob Snow Show, City News. The Rob Snow Show. Weekdays at 9 on Rogers TV and City News. 1011 FM and 1310 AM. Number one for local news in Ottawa and the Valley. Brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com.